are at the top of whatever you're doing, women see you. Women like alphas. You know what they see when they look at church? They respect the pastor because he's the alpha at the church. You know why the orderly don't get no pussy but the doctor does? Because she respects the doctor at the hospital. You know why the fucking superstar athlete get all the hoes and the guy that's playing the bitch get the strippers? Because the superstar athlete is the alpha of the scenario. Get it. Okay, baby girl, sit down. Let's chop it up. Let's chop it up. Bam. <laughs> Red Pill Lions podcast, we are in the presence of two real pimps this time. And I'm pretty sure that they don't just talk like pimps. They may have actually been pimps. We've got BOA and Afi Kingdom in the building. Welcome to Connecticut. And they're actually happy to be in Connecticut. Most people are like, where the fuck am I at? BOA's thinking about coming up here permanently. We know how Joe Rogan feels about Connecticut. (laughs) What's up, fellas? How you doing? Hey, what's good, bro? What's good? What's good? It's good to be here, man. And uh, seeing the mountains and woods and all that type of shit. We're going to get to the NFT holder questions because we got a lot of questions for BOA and Afi. And this is for you guys but i just want to start this off by saying these guys are hysterical to be around you will laugh so much (laughs) absolutely when boa and afi kingdom are in town just having usual conversation i'm beginning to take notes just just when they're talking like we were in the car on the way to get coffee and i'm just overhearing their conversation i started taking notes one thing that we've kind of touched on before when we would talk about the old school rap versus new school rap mentality Mm -hmm. remember when we were talking with av about how uh the young kids for the longest time were saying like Fuck Pac, fuck Biggie, tell the old guys to get out of the yeah, way. The it's the new generation's time. We were talking about it, and I had to write down what BOA said. The difference between an OG and an old head. This is beautiful. An old head doesn't respect anyone's grind but his own. An OG respects the grind, meaning he respects anyone who's on their grind. Do you want to elaborate on that? I just thought that was brilliant. Yeah, you know, the truth of the matter is, man, there's a certain respect that you have to give the grind. If you've gone through it and you took all the steps. Now, some guys get to the epitome and they did have to take all the steps. They get a handout. And when you get a handout, you can't respect the grind because, you know, you just you don't understand it. So when you see a guy grinding, you're like, oh, he's beneath me because mm-hmm. you don't remember being in that place. And so you just become this hater guy who's like, well, uh, I didn't have to go through all of that. So I'm better than you. You're beneath me. But a guy who's been on the grind, he's like, yeah, I remember those times. I was just telling Sable the other day, man, chill, man. This shit bring back memories. I remember being at a flop house. You know what I'm saying? And that shit was some of the best memories I've ever had because mm-hmm. everything in my life was so raw and authentic. And I knew the people around me. Now I got 200,000 motherfuckers, man. And I've never met. I've only met about 20 of them in person. And they come in and want to talk shit to me or, you know, or, give me their undying support and i'm like man i don't know what any of this shit is but i do know one thing the most authentic time is in a man's life is when he's focused on himself and not all the exterior shit man absolutely and it's almost like uh with the og and all head perspective it's like that saying that like game respects game so like grind respects grind if you've been through it that's the perspective of being on the grind and seeing someone go through it yeah they call our place the flop because it's like a flop house we we, you know, we live with five roommates have most of our life like our friends that we grew up with and uh boa was like man it's always gonna be a flop it's just gonna improve <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> i like this you need to make a reality show out the shit you i just gave you a million dollars give me like ten thousand out of that <laughs> you make a reality show you tape the shit and then you the grind yeah. And, what, and, and one more thing I say about that man Sometimes those old heads can be motherfuckers close to you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like your dad can be an old head Your uncle can be an old head Your older brother Fortunately you don't have that issue But <laughs> your, man it can come from anywhere And you're like bro you know me personally mm-hmm. Like, why, You see the grind every day But it doesn't matter if I see it I can see it in front of me and still not understand it Because I didn't experience it mm-hmm. But the funny thing is it's probably been a long time Since you were the older guy Trying to knock sense into to a young kid who wasn't ready to hear it because like we've been talking about like being like young is almost like being in a state of psychosis where when a a older brother figure or a father figure starts trying to talk sense into you 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 can't see it as anything else but hating until you get a little bit older but you in the position that you're in you're answering coaching calls you know you're dealing with clientele you're giving wisdom to guys that are paying to be in your chats so that's kind of the unique thing about the manosphere is that that's the one place where you actually have young dudes that have done some sort of self-analyzation to know that like i don't have all the answers so i got to come to an og to get answers so it's actually probably been a long time since you had to try to knock sense into like some young ignorant kid that thought he knew all the answers because they're coming to you because they know they don't have all the answers you know you would think that but they get to a point where they think they have the answer Mm 
Mm-hmm. And so instead of coming to you to get the answer, they want verification of the answer that they think they have. Oh. And it never happens that way because you don't have the answer. Yeah. So, you know, guys coming to me, he's, he's on he's on seeking arrangements. He's got three girls on seeking arrangements. Started off with a pay for pay, yeah. you know, a pay for play arrangement. How do I turn her into my wife? I, I, I think I love her. I'm like, you the fuck not. I've had calls from guys, man, that were buying girls BMWs. No. Buying them, I'm not, not renting them condos, buying no. them condos. I'm talking about guys with big money on there i'm like bro you you got the cheat code yeah. what the hell give me half of your money i'll show you what to do with the cheat code bro i was just picturing in my head someone telling you they bought some girl on seeking arrangements a bmw and your reaction like what the fuck is you doing yeah. but that is probably That's what you say yeah yeah what what you mean what you mean bought her you, like bought her <laughs> fucking nuts man do you think though <laughs> that there's like like people say if you got money you can get a girl but do you think that you know that all that goes out the window if you got the money but you ain't got no game. Yeah, yeah. Because dudes without game lead with their wallet. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, I done had cats uh, <laughs> uh, consultations with cats trying to get me to manage their tricking, and I'm anti tricking, but it's weird. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, yeah I, this is how much I'm spending. I'm trying to spend a little less. Well, <laughs> I told them, why don't you step? Why don't you quit making high offers first? You know what I'm saying? I, I told a cat like cheated like the kiosk. You know what I'm saying? If I want to go buy a a watch from the mall in the kiosk. If I got a thousand, I'ma say I got three hundred and mm-hmm. up. He'd yeah. be like, "Yeah, be my girl, get ten thousand, five thousand, and like, yeah, bro, why you, why you even tell her? Mm-hmm. Like, you know." So. Hey, the other thing is, there's so many dudes. We were talking a lot this weekend about there's so many dudes that are, are trying to pay to get a woman's affection. They they never understood that they had a little game. These girls would be paying them. And, and Afi, you got a story for everything. How many girls have paid you just to be in your presence? Because I know you got some stories. Uh, so I had this bitch right, <laughs> and. I, see, I'm a heavy troll, and I like just fucking with people. Mm-hmm. So I was fucking with her, and I told the bitch that I was homeless, right? <laughs> just you out weren't. of a joke. But you weren't though. No. Okay. But I wasn't even. Was but I wasn't trying to really sell it to her. I was, you know, because that's, that's just that's, fucking that's, around almost. Yeah. yeah. But I don't want always like I don't want you to know if I'm fucking around. Yeah. You got to be smart enough, right? So I got this bitch, and I told her that I was homeless, and and really I was. Uh, working out of school, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I used to tell her, I used to tell her like, oh, yo, yeah, what you doing over? Like, yeah, I'm on the block. It's slow right now. Ooh, I'd be at work and shit. So she used to pay for all the shit, right, for my stuff. What's funny was, is when she found out after like two years that I wasn't living in my car, and that I actually at that time I was a behavior counselor. I went to teaching. Um, she wasn't interested no more. It's like she was attracted to the fact that you were homeless. She was attracted. So she was homeless? attracted that I was a cool looking dude with potential that she can take credit for. Oh. You see what I'm saying? And, but 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 you know, it was just all a joke. But that's what you know. It's just like you know these bitches. I see you. Oh yeah, look at him. Uh, yeah, he didn't have this before he met me. Now he that they love to say that. You yeah. hear you hear women say it, but you just think they're saying it. They mm-hmm. love to say that. That's it gives them that. And they and they wanna it's like it's like a it's like me finding a dog. Like, ooh, who's this dog without a home? Let me bring it up to par. That's how the bitches look at you when you like that. So the fact that she didn't wasn't molding because she probably telling her friends this whole fucking narrative and shit. And now she can't tell her friends that because I flipped it on her. And it's just funny too. Like, you know, sometimes bitches they wanna take care of you. But they they gotta see, people don't understand. They, 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 it's the opposite women always got to get something out of it. it it just depends on the bitch what that is though and people don't understand that it's not always a value it's like sex sex it's you know some of these bitches i might be the father they never had mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and me dealing with enough hoes i can hear what she says and become that instantly you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because I didn't. Because it's because for me, when I look at bitches, they're categories. I don't look at this these individual bitches. No, every bitch I meet, it sounds like five or six other hoes. So it's like, okay, she's one of them type of bitches. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna get this angle on. Like I have rich angles, I have grinding angles. Some bitches I say I do podcasts. Some bitches I say I teach. Some bitches somehow it don't matter. I I just sometimes I'm playing and just it's whatever. So you you know it's it's just about adapting, but knowing what to adapt to and. And just understanding cues, too, because hoes say shit, and they don't even know what they mean, and mm-hmm. I know what they mean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. To simplify it, man, it's kind of like if a bitch got a red dress, and she want a pair of blue red bottom shoes because the bitch got a blue bra that's going to strap out, 
you can buy her every other color thousand dollar red bottom shoe you want the bitch ain't gonna appreciate it because mm-hmm. she wants a blue pair yeah and women are simple like that guys complicated by when you look at the woman you know what she wants by the way she responds if she's giving you anything it's because she likes what you're doing yes. continue to do that shit until it doesn't work then read the bitch and see what what else is gonna work all you got to do man is just open your mind to paying attention to the bra once you got her she a, a woman only if she's fucking you it's because man she feels like you could be that motherfucker yeah like most women just say out here saying hey there's a guy i'm gonna fuck him he ain't got he ain't got no potential no nothing i'm just gonna fuck him if she gives you pussy and money or a pussy and buys you a car or or any other type of thing she's all the way open all you got to do man is own that shit and say okay this woman views me as the dominant motherfucker that i am yeah mm-hmm. and that way man you just you could just open up and be yourself and the thing i think most young guys don't understand the best thing you could be is yourself the best thing I can be is be your way. Because I know like a motherfucker, she may have met a motherfucker richer. She may have met a motherfucker no ha- more handsome. Not many. But she may have met a motherfucker cooler or whatever. But she ain't never mother- met a motherfucker like B.O.A. Man, I'm solid B's across the board. He may have an A in this, an A in that, but he got a D in that. I'm mm-hmm. solid B's, baby. And that's how I approach the world and women. The woman will let you know the thing that makes her go. Most guys are too busy trying to love the broad or impress the broad mm-hmm. or or make her, you know, or fix her problems. Well, my dad mm-hmm. did this. Did he? Well, shit, that's how you feel. Okay, let me put this over here in my compartment over here mm-hmm. instead of saying, well, I can fix it. You know, I give you the sun, the rain, you know, all of that shit yeah, there, man. Yeah. So women are real simple, but these guys out here selling all this bullshit complicated and make young guys feel like, man, oh, how the hell am I going to ever get a woman? Be yourself. Yeah, that was a good point that you just made. A lot of dudes have confidence issues because they think they need to be something so out yeah. of this world in order to get a woman. But when you do attract a woman, you got to ask yourself, which like I've asked myself this or just kind of put this into perspective. Like I'm five, six. OK, any girl I've been with must have had a dude that's much <laughs> taller, right. must have had a dude with a bigger dick, must have had a dude at some point with a bigger bank account. But right now she's fucking with me. And I, I don't know how many dudes stop and ask themselves that because how do you get yourself a girl and then you still have her or you have a rotation of women and you're still asking yourself, but why can't I be this other man or live up to this other ideal? But it's like tap into the reason she's fucking with yeah. you because you yeah. you have some some kind of potential that you're not even self-evaluating, right? Hey, let me let me add this, Savo, because I thought I had a lot of game, but doing YouTube and coaching, my shit's like five lo- – it's like five times better because I'm I'm solving so many issues that I wouldn't have to deal with, and 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 just figuring things out and they work and it's 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 kind of just different because before I start doing content I kind of thought um, it's like there's there's the cool kids and there's not the cool kids so I didn't know that there was cats who had their shit together that didn't get bitches I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, you, you know the cats that don't get no cheeks. You know they play video games, fat mm-hmm. and shit in their basement. We know them, but I didn't know that there was six figure guys with six packs who didn't know how to talk to hoes. Yeah, I've like, met them. You know what I mean, I didn't know that. So doing this exposed me to it, and then it's just like, wow, this shit is really. Because before you just kind of see what's going on in your circle. Mm-hmm. You, what's going on in your circle? You miss out. So it's just kind of interesting, just seeing the behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah, and you know, a lot of times, man, what guys don't understand is. If you look at a woman like she's a gift to you, you don't view yourself as a gift to the world. 100%. Well, man, you got to take every good thing about you. And then I tell guys all the time, man, we ain't got no weaknesses. We got strengths, and then we just got normalcies. Mm-hmm. If you compare your normal shit to your strengths, yeah, they look like weaknesses. But we don't have weaknesses. Every fucking thing we have has the potential to benefit our lives. Mm-hmm. Everything that doesn't is external anyway. So when you look at yourself and say, man, you know, I'm a gift to the world. Like these save old cats, man, man, they're a gift to the world. Facts. These are some of the most talented motherfuckers I've ever seen. Yeah. And they're young and talented. Yeah. Add 10 years to their lives doing this same shit. They become the best you fucking ever seen. Could be the best you ever seen now. Yeah. But wait till everybody sees them. So, man, when you look at that, just take your one gift. All it takes is one. Mm-hmm. The shit that you're better at than everybody else. You know what I'm better at than anybody else? Fucking songwriting. I'm the best at that shit. And it has always been the thing that, you know what? Yeah, you could do that better than me. But motherfucker, I'm a hell of a songwriter. Mm-hmm. And I see the way the right song makes a woman act and behave. And I'm like, shit, 
I got the fucking golden key. Mm -hmm. Like, I can tell a woman something. Man, when I talk to bitches, I started talking to bitches a long time ago like I was singing an R&B song to the bitch. And so I talked to her in R&B lyrics. I mean, not no, I'll yeah. buy you this and take you no, there. Yeah, I get what but, you're saying. And, you know, if you look into your soul and look into yourself, you, you'll find what you're missing. And I'm just the man that leads you there. Women don't want to be in a fantasy world. They're in a fantasy world because they don't know how to fucking process the oh, real world. Tell it. If you put her in the mindset of accepting the reality... She don't know what to accept. So how does she know it? Heat up. You fucking feed it to Women her. Women get triggered mm -hmm. by the reality. Heat up. Though. Yeah, you give her her reality. Listen to her. You, I tell guys all the time, and you talk to a woman in a language she understands, you can't talk like a fucking physicist to a hood chick. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to talk hood vernacular to her. Yeah. And yeah. you can't talk that ebonic shit to a chick who been in the burbs her whole life. Mm -hmm. So in every facet, man, you talk to a woman in a language she understands, and she's going to listen. Because deep down inside, she's wired to fucking follow your lead. Yeah. But if you can't lead you, fuck trying to lead her. That's some shit. Pretty much. That was some I like told that. you you was going to get up too much game yesterday. <laughs> I told you. That's what we need it right there. Uh, what's the number one question that you get asked when uh, guys hit you for coaching, BOA? Like, what's the, what's the number one reoccurring theme? How do I become the most alpha version of myself and take control of my relationship because I'm a beta in it? That that question specifically? That question. I'm a beta in my relationship. How do I regain control? How do I take control of my... Some of them never had control. They've just been beta the whole time. Yep. And they want to figure out how they can become the most alpha version of themselves while existing in a relationship where their beta is fuck and the broad treat them like a beta. Mm -hmm. The one answer. You got to end that shit. Yeah, you can't, you can't reach. You, you got to strip yourself. all the shit that's making you beta out of your life. Yeah. Because you can't just suddenly turn up, hey, shit's going to change today. She's looking at you, man, get the fuck yeah, out of here. Yeah, yeah. 100%. You know what I'm get the, I'll leave you today. No, baby, don't leave. Once you're in a mindset with a woman, you can't break that mindset with her. Now, you can be alpha in a relationship, go beta, because you get your feelings caught up and then snap out of it. Mm -hmm. But you can only go back to your original self, man. To become the most alpha version of yourself, you got to eliminate everything that's, I call it, uh, the beta male oppression everything that's oppressing your alpha energy you got to get rid of it man and you got to just start from scratch a woman who sees you as beta is never going to see you as alpha she just mm -hmm. never is mm -hmm. she has too many great experiences of dominating your ass to Absolutely. ever give you control and so when that guys ask terrible. me that yeah when guys ask me that i'm like bro you just gotta you gotta give it up man but i love her man yeah that's part of the fucking problem it, it, you know what's so funny about the term alpha is I, I don't know whether or not to consider myself alpha because i'm definitely ambitious i'm definitely a leader but the only reason i don't think i call myself alpha is because i'm not extremely harsh like actually you want truthfully even though he's a pain in the ass the most alpha motherfucker out of the three of us is him He's the one that is actually beating bitches off with both hands. Like, not true. Literally. No, no, no. Not, 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 not literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a metaphor, but You figured it out early. No, but he's actually the one that, like, I don't know, been through how many girls just this past but two years I have, and hasn't locked down I, I also girlfriend. have a couple simp friends that, like, misunderstand, like, the red pill and, and alpha, and they, they say, like, all right, well, if you're alpha, does it mean, like, I'm, I'm simp or beta for holding the car door open for my girl or like or, or being polite buying her stuff or like stuff stuff like that so they were like saying like is it is there a, what's the medium to like being like alpha and like not being simp like is there a perfect medium for and, that but, and before you answer i would say my assessment of that is is you could be a gentleman but you can't be a gentleman like a bitch like when you get in that car door it's not because like i'm just so happy to be in your presence I, it's, it's like yeah it's, i guess my question is is there a point where you're being two gentlemen to the point where it's simp yeah when you start putting a woman before you mm -hmm. see i hold the door for a woman but i'm going through the bitch first i'm going through the door and i'm holding the motherfucker so she can come in behind me because mm -hmm. you ain't never going in front of me if i'm going to be the leader then i go first mm -hmm. that's just how it is and you i mean the the the, the real the most basic thing i can say about how you deal with a woman man in, in, in first alpha and versus beta goes you give a woman what she deserves if she's earned yeah having the door held for hold the door for her Mm -hmm. If she hasn't, like you don't just go into a situation, first date with a woman, you holding doors and shit and you pulling out chairs and all that. No, man, everything you do to a woman has to have value. Why does it have value? Because it's fucking coming from you. That's how much you have to value yourself. That guy may hold the door for you. That ain't shit. He's just a dude holding the door. Babe, I'm BOA holding the door for you. Yeah, that yeah. shit resonates. And when it comes to your, you know, your friends, man, some of your friends are never going to understand it because they're yeah. trying to be alpha. I don't even tell, I don't call myself an alpha. 
I mean, I do call myself the Alpha Dun Dot Ang a lot, but that's just because I call I call myself the leader of men striving to become the most alpha version. Absolutely. None of us can ever say we're alpha because the ultimate alpha means every facet of your life is under your control. We live in a society, mm. man, that'll end your shit for nothing because of Andrew Tate. Yeah. For just because they don't like what you're saying. You can be rich, you can be famous, you can be whatever. So none of us is going to be just, I'm the alpha of this shit. But you just try to become the most alpha version of yourself because the principles that represent that are going to improve your fucking life. I like that you brought up Tate. And before we get to the holder questions, um, how, how do you guys feel about Tate getting canceled? Because all the, uh, you know, we're in the manosphere, we're red pill creators, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's pretty controversial topics that, that we touch on and stuff. So after uh, Andrew Tate uh, getting canceled, a lot of uh, influencers, or especially people in the manosphere, are a little nervous about getting their channel deleted or, or, or something like that. You know? So uh, how, do you, how, do, how do you feel about Andrew Tate and him being canceled off of socials? You want to handle it, Fee? Uh, yeah, I made a little video about it, and I'll tell you how much I cared about it. It was a short. <laughs> that I gave it 15 seconds. The there motherfucker has hundreds of millions of dollars. What am I supposed to do? Cry? <laughs> get, get me to get you know me this shit. I gotta give it to you. That's a perspective we didn't even touch on when we did the whole hour long thing yeah. on it. It's like, yeah, yeah, he's got millions bro, of dollars. He'll be fine, shit, bro. Millions of dollars, hoes. He got all the shit that people want the social status to get. He already got. So what the fuck? For one, two, he ain't put me on any podcast for me to lose sleep. Three. These fucking podcast guys are just clout chasers, bro. They don't really want to care. They, they weren't caring about him like that, but when he was doing this shit, <laughs> yeah. now now they just putting his name in here for fucking views. The, I don't like that type of shit. The only thing I don't like is did it set a, a, a precedent that... Is that the right word? Precedent? Precedent. President? President? See, but I don't want to say president. Press a okay. dent. Okay. Let dent. me say this before, before I go forget, because I forget. The motherfucker didn't get canceled because he's a misogynist. He got canceled because he has influence and he's a misogynist. Yeah. You see, I, I can be. Okay, you can, do you consider him a misogynist? A, hell yeah. I I'm think he didn't, he didn't get canceled till he went mainstream. Yeah. And that, but 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 that's what I'm saying. So look, let's let's use. Uh, nah, I ain't gonna do that. What I was just about to do. <laughs> let's use. Let's use. Uh, let's use OG whatever. Like, see. Andrew Tate, like, okay, let's just put another person who's popping like that. I don't know. Let's use Master P. Okay, Master P. He, he People not going to follow him because he's like an older guy. He got all this shit. Tate is like the Superman for players. They're mm -hmm. going to listen to what the fuck he says. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can I can say the same thing he say and, and, and or put it like this. I can say some shit right now. I can write it down, say it. And I, I say I'm his ghostwriter. Give it to Tate. This is the best shit I heard. Because he got the cars, the bitches. The lifestyle. The, the lifestyle. So people go and follow that. It's not people just think because he's famous. No, you can be famous. That don't mean motherfuckers follow and listen to what you do to an extent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 you know, what? Well, one, th one thing I'll say is this, man. With all the followers that he has, like in his academy and shit, this really is the best thing that ever happened to him. Because you know more motherfuckers bought in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now his shit is underground, undercover. He's got this huge following of people without the glare of social media on his shit. So he can really, really mm -hmm. start influencing motherfuckers to just become the best version of themselves. And one other thing I'll say, man, is this. Like I was saying the other day, there's rules to every game. Mm -hmm. You understand? Motherfuckers who came from and one and went to the league. A lot of them, they, they fizzled out because they couldn't stop carrying and double dribbling and yeah. shit. Shit that you could do in street ball. Yeah. And there's rules. And if you want to be in this league, there's going to be some rules that govern. Man, we yeah. live in a society that's been governing us for our whole fucking lives. Mm -hmm. So if you can't wrap your mind around the concept of consequences and repercussions, and I knew he knew the consequences and repercussions. Like, he, he the first motherfucker got canceled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't think he gave a fuck. Social media means a lot more to us than it ever meant to him. Yeah. I also think that the people that cancel them don't understand both sides. I meet some people that see our content on, on the red pill stuff that we do, and they're like, oh, well, I, I have some uh, disagreements. I can debate you guys, or like, especially like a girl that says this. And I'm like, to be able to debate somebody, you have to look at both sides of the argument. And I don't think people do that. And I was out in New York. Anybody doesn't know I'm the street interview uh, street crew for uh, Red Pill Lines. We do the street interviews in New York. We're going out there every Hilarious, week. Hilarious, by the way. Um and we were interviewing girls on Andrew Tate, and I said, do you know who Andrew Tate is? They're like, yes, I don't like him at all. Uh, and um, I'm, okay. I'm like, okay, so is there anything that he said that you didn't agree with? And um, they're just so triggered by it, they couldn't think of one thing. And this is several women I've interviewed. 
they couldn't think of one thing that they didn't like uh, uh, or that they didn't like that he said or a statement that he said. So I think they're just too quick to ju- to judge and not look deeper in because they don't know much about yeah, cause it. Because they see the 15-second the clip that's pushed by all the people that repost his shit, and they're basically just like, well, this is his entire they're, personality. They're this is all it is. They're just fuck tape train or because fuck no one, train. Because no one you know wants I mean? to look into any of the actual shit like, and then have an actual educated argument. They just want to see the face value and be yeah. like, he's bad. That's the problem. Now, everything you guys are saying is true. But which one of us is going to start to do the exact same type of content that Andrew Tate did on our platforms? Why? Yeah. Because that's just the fucking reality. Mm-hmm. We can yeah. cry about it. Guys can make posts about it and content about it. It doesn't fucking matter. Mm. This is the society that we live in today. And we just got to accept it. Either yeah. you can go across that line and say, okay, I may be the next to get counseled. Yeah. Or you can say, okay, let's let's fall back and regroup and see what we can do to change some of this shit. Because mm-hmm. all these podcast, all this content about it, man, it ain't going to do shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A whole yeah. bunch of complaining about shit, it don't matter. Just that just, that just let them know that, yeah, we got their ass this time. Look at them all in their feelings yeah. and yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. We need to regroup and see, okay, how can we as a collective put pressure on these motherfuckers to say, okay, well, we'll do this if this is how y'all going to play us. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's if enough of us say fuck this, we're gonna do this. They have to respond. That's the thing about the other side. They respond in waves. They don't know what the fuck. Like you said, I don't yeah. know why I don't like him, mm-hmm. but the rest of the girls don't like him. So fuck it. So you <laughs> got ten million of them that don't like Andrew Tate. Yeah. You can't get ten million of us to do shit, even <laughs> though we don't agree with how they just said. Okay, today we're gonna get right. Andrew Tate on social media. Mm-hmm. What well, the reason I can't get behind it is not because I'm the biggest Tate fan in the world. When we did the podcast, I said this. This is not in defense of him it's just to push back against cancel culture and the idea that we're going to take anything down that's politically incorrect i don't like that i don't stand for that and and i can't stand for it because before it was the manosphere before there was a red pill anything before there was a rational mail book or any of these channels this is what attacked rock and roll and then it's what attacked hip-hop do you remember when chuck d was like seen as dangerous by the media yeah, yeah. chuck d and flavor Flav is about the most tamed kind of music you could think of today but you know yeah you around that age yeah, you remember yeah, yeah, when yeah. it the media was was all white and they were actually just terrified so that's why i can't get down with it because you know nwa and public enemy and snoop dogg about the most tamed thing you can think of these days but there was a time where they're like burn the records take the records out of the record yeah. store uh, the one thing I do like is today, it does seem like we finally won the battle of if it's creative and it's music, they could say what the fuck they want. So when Snoop Dogg says, fuck these hoes, it's like that's Snoop and it's a song. When Andrew mm-hmm. Tate says, fuck these hoes, it, like mm-hmm. he was saying on the podcast we did, it doesn't stand behind a, a hit record. It's just right, a guy. Right. Talking. That's, his, right, that's all right, of his content. Right. So they're like, take it down. It's not one of the forgiving, I, I call it the forgiving presentational platforms. Mm-hmm. Hip hop yeah. is now a forgiving. A but it forgiving, wasn't always. There it was, was a yeah, fight it wasn't to get always. It there. there was a fucking fight. And that, my point exactly. Circle back. What's our fight to get this shit we're doing to the point? Because there are many more of us on social media creating waves and, and, and educating the masses then there are guys in fucking hip hop that are doing the same thing yeah. mm-hmm. the public enemies of the world are fucking gone yep. that's no more in hip hop and if it is you gotta find it way underground mm-hmm. where they don't give a fuck about it yeah, anyway no traction. So, so what are we gonna do as a collective to say okay this shit we don't like this shit not because you know I've never listened to one single clip of Andrew Tate ever mm-hmm. oh, never really? never but I'm, I'm I, calling cap but, but man never I never have like when you think <laughs> he's about all it, over the place li- 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 listen bro I'm the only content I get is when people send to me so I'm not he on social lying. media like that you think yeah. BOA is a like, TikTok like, like I never lying. I never listen to I've never listened Instagram to, Reels I, Facebook listen, bro, I, I, Twitter I, I never listen to one I will of Kevin, show you one. I never listen to one of Kevin Samuel shows man ever no because shit. I'm just not on social media I'm a content creator man yeah. I put oh, up four or five yeah, pieces of content a day when I'm done with that shit I don't want no more social media man Mm-hmm. And if I'm on YouTube, I'm watching shit about cameras and, and lighting and mm-hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Grown. And then I'm done with it, trying to live my life outside of that. Because, you know, I'm an OG, man. I be- yeah. I have the majority of my life is <clears throat> offline. And I don't want to get to that point where, shit, my life is online. So I just never have. And this ain't this ain't for me to, like, flex or anything. Yeah, no, yeah. But I, w- w- the, you can see the narrative about, you know, you read a story. Well, famous, you know, I didn't know the, he was a kickboxer or any of that shit until yeah, they yeah. fucking got him off yeah. when they got him off then i read into the shit i was like wait a minute the, the, wait a minute this cat this ain't no recent shit he's saying like every day they pull yeah. old clips of this guy mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and fucking cancel him about it. I was like, okay, man, we got to do something about this. They can't pull up some shit you said fucking on somebody else's shit or, or as a skit or some shit or just talking shit in your room. And all of a sudden, I said, man, we got to do something about this shit, man, because this shit make me not even want to be a part of this social media shit. They anymore. did the same shit to Rogan. They did, they'll did. Yeah. they pull up yeah, anything pull they can shit. find yeah. and try yeah. to, like, Yeah, they're like probably going to clip you. this podcast for coming to be like, Mark, yeah. just be like, you know, I like, think, yeah. hey, did you see this clip? Let me, say for the re- let me say for the record, though, for me, I was a Tate fan, but I, I figured out about Tate like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Because, me too. I, and I'm not going to lie, too, because I seen him on Instagram. And I'm one. Of, I always liked to fight when I was kids, and when I was a kid, and I used to like kickboxer and all of that shit. And uh, I seen they were doing the Thai shit, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Who are these saucy Thai niggas with all these cars and shit?" <laughs> right? <laughs> they, they, they own beaches and do, doing this shit. They got all these Lamborghinis. And then, and then from then, I found out about I found out about Tate Confidential. So I didn't know I didn't know that it had Tate Peach. I just thought their channel was a vlog, and it had fifty thousand subs. And I remember watching it like the fuck are these guys not famous and they're doing all of this shit yeah so i was like kind of waiting for him to be famous and i and i and that will i'm the type of person once i catch interest like if i watch a good movie after the movie's over i watch it again direct with commentary mm-hmm. then i'll look up shit that's just how i like I'll, I'll i'll do a day of it if something really captures me and uh when i figured out they was black then i was like okay i really fuck with mm-hmm. them now because i didn't know i could i didn't know they was black cats they had black dad and shit so when i figured that out and i seen i was like oh these Brothers too. Oh yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, most people wouldn't think that. Yeah. yeah. The last thing I'll say on it is um when I saw Tate's content, the one thing I really looked into was um marketing dynamics mm-hmm. to like learn how to like add to your own bag and like the way that there's different forms of marketing, whether it's like what you're saying, like the shock value or Shit, how you have people push it and stuff like that. <laughs> I feel cool now. It's it's crazy how you could uh m- not manipulate, but the way that you like formulate how you're going to push a certain like sense of content Mm -hmm. can like change the output of what you're pulling in and like so you can look at so many different people and see like what works what doesn't work how to like analyze the market and see where you can put your content out there and like Mm -hmm. what platforms because there's so many different fucking platforms yeah there's so many different ways to approach it let me uh let me me, add one more thing man and i'll tell you this one thing we learned from it and i know this already Mm -hmm. uh, and just from watching photographers they always say have your own fucking website. Mm-hmm. So if they cancel you on social media, the social media shit could go away tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You still have a place where your people are plugged in. And that's one thing we saw. Just imagine if he had his academy only stream, only flooding through social media and they canceled this shit and cut him off from everybody. So I just believe, man, it, it's really just about this. what this shows us. One thing is you better protect yourself from this fucking let's cancel this yeah. guy narrative mm-hmm. by yeah. pulling as many people as you can from social media to a source that you control. Yeah, let me bring this back full circle real quick. So, like I was saying, I was using him as an example because everybody wants to debate definitions of alpha or high value and compare situations. So, I'd say, like, arguably, just just generally, he's probably the most alpha because he's gotten through, I don't know how many, you've been with how many different girls the past two years and hasn't locked down a girlfriend. He is a girlfriend. I usually stick with rotations, but I'm still taking these girls to dinner and mm-hmm. shit. And and I, I put the romance on and shit because I'm I'm a, I'm a storyteller. I'm a poet. I could never fully escape romance. But you're I a have, centric, bro. All the centric cats got put. That's why I get bitches. Yeah, yeah, but I have enough discipline to not allow myself to be disrespected. I will leave if I need to leave. I've left girls that I'm in love with. That's what I was telling Shove the other day. Mm-hmm. Now Shove, and I want to bring him on after I read his book. But Shove was on that tip of don't love a woman altogether it, it seemed and, and in so love. right and so or don't don't be in love never don't be intoxicated Weak. and i got my feelings on that too but i just want as a, as a general understanding from your point of view is to be alpha to be harsh and never love is it is it just because then i'm is, ready for this answer yeah is it just to 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 have a rotation till the end of time which i could see myself doing but I think alpha at the end of the day, aside from the leadership aspect, the ambition aspect, what really makes an alpha as opposed to just a dude who's got his shit together and is good with women is a sense of, of harshness, right? Or how do you see it? It's, it's not really harshness. That's a, that's a particular play on words. Mm-hmm. Harsh is like, yeah, he's me, motherfucker, don't care about it. Yeah. No, nah, it's just about self-protection. Mm-hmm. Like you put, you prioritize yourself and people over get that everyone. Mm-hmm. Like I come first. I don't give a fuck who it is. I told my son the other day, I said, man, I ain't got nothing but love for you, son. But, you know, I, I want you to learn the way I'm teaching you now. Always put yourself first because I put myself first. Yeah. And I've been teaching him that since he was five years old. 
and he, he's wrapped his mind around the concept. His mom complains all the time. He's selfish. All he thinks about is himself. So that's my boy right there. Because <laughs> as you get into the world, you realize, man, no one else like will. right now, you got your brothers. Mm -hmm. You got your brothers. You got a crew. Mm -hmm. Outside of this, you know, everybody else can pretty much come and go. These guys are your guys regardless. Mm -hmm. But what if you don't have that? It's just you. Mm -hmm. You got to prioritize yourself. Because one thing I tell guys all the time. Nobody is going to be here with you through every fucking thing Thanks. you ever deal with. Yeah. The ups, the downs, the highs, the lows. When you in a cot or in, a, in a fucking camp at prison, when you in the military, getting your ass chewed out by some motherfucker that's shorter than you, skinnier than you, but he got stripes on his shoulder. Yeah. When you sitting in the room like, you know, I wonder if I should kill me or kill this woman because I'm so hurt. Mm -hmm. Or when you, you know, whatever you're going through. And so you have to prioritize yourself because nobody's going to bail you out of your shit but you. Yeah. At a certain point, you're going to look up and you're going to be in some shit. This happens to us all and nobody's going to be there. Even the people yeah. that have been there before, they're going to say, man, fuck this, man. We're tired of bailing you out of shit. <laughs> and they just going to fall back and you're going to be like, oh, shit. And then you're going to understand what it means to have people supporting you yeah. because people who support you are going to want the best for you. And sometimes nice. they'll sacrifice themselves to see that. Nice. So it's just about self-protection, man. It may seem harsh if I tell a woman it's my way or no way. Cause I, and and I, when I say it's my way or no way, oh, you're selfish. No, I know that my way is going to be fair to both of us. You're mm -hmm. a woman. You're going to be selfish as shit if I give you the reins. Everything you do is going to benefit you. And I'm going to be like, well, fuck. <laughs> I give her all of my money and she yeah. won't even give me $20 of it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so you have to do that, man. So being alpha is... I say we strive to be the most alpha version of ourselves because that means you're at the epitome in every arena. You get a million dollars, you're still not going to be alpha. You want two million. Mm -hmm. You know, you get three million, you want five. Yep. If you become, no matter how lean you become, you know, you look at yourself, you're like, okay, I think I'm going to bulk a little bit. I think I need to, yeah. you know, yeah. get bigger yeah, pecs a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So you just, you're never satisfied with yourself. So you're constantly striving to become the most alpha version of yourself. That's just it. And so in order to do that, you have to prioritize your shit. What if a woman wants you to go out, man, and eat cake with her? You know, let's go here and just eat cake no, today we don't eat cake and eat ice cream no, tomorrow no. and do. No, you go eat that shit yourself. I'll see you when you get back with your nice. fat ass. So, you know, <laughs> you know, so yeah. it, it's really, it, and it seems harsh because every day you wake up, okay, I'll come first. You go to sleep, I'll come first. Tomorrow, at some point, the woman is like, damn, I've been with him six months. Normally, a guy's all over me. He still puts himself first. He's mm. mean. He's alpha. He's a misogynist. He's this and he's that. No. I'm just the only motherfucker I can rely on yeah. 100%. Because if, yeah. if you're my brother, at some point some shit comes up, I expect you to prioritize yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't expect my brother to say, okay, one of us has to die. I guess it'll be me. I'll let my... Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I hate it had to come to this, bro, but shit, man. Damn, bro. Yeah. Either let's try to save all of us, let's try to save both of us, mm -hmm. or let's just go for it, whichever one of us doesn't make it, then mm -hmm. I love you, bro. Yeah. But that's just how it is, man. So it takes harshness to put yourself first. And then it takes experience. You, know, you, you saw you took that shit back to that word. Yeah. But it's, it's true. Harsh. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. But that's, that's oh, but hold up. Yeah. That's what I got from that. You said right, it's right, not right. harshness. It's putting yourself first. Yeah, but right, how right. does that look to people? When, yeah. when you got to cut your friends off because they're the dead weight and you got to prioritize yourself, yeah. can't give a fuck. do they think that you just... Oh wow, he's just going after what what Can't makes him fuck, happy yeah. and, and Can't give a fuck. No, no, it's, he's yeah. harsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, to you them gotta it does cut seem off harsh. a girl because yeah. she's fucking up your life. That's harsh to her because she expects you to just well, shouldn't we talk it out? How how much can we talk about how you fucking up my life? Sometimes you just yeah. gotta go. Uh, well, let's just go with that word harsh. It's harsh. Yeah. It's harsh. Yeah. 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 But but uh I guess you take like like the Tate thing helps perpetuate this as well, but there was there's always a, a, a negative idea associated with the the tough confident hard often muscular alpha man but it's but, a double standard because women get to be you know they they want to be independent uh, tough and strong and enough. and strive mm, together yeah. but but it's wrong if men do it yeah and even now muscular oh, hey look look at mm. my listen man i see girls online deadlifting like, like what <laughs> You're like you're like a woman. You want you want your quads that big? <laughs> like what's yeah, going on? But but, but in, in all, it sounds like you're talking about prioritizing yourself. That's because it. at the end of the day, we're we're very taught to look out for your woman before you, look out for others before you, and, and I think maybe I could, I could get with that if you have a family. But man, I've been being encouraged to put a woman before me since I was like 20 years old. I don't have a kid with her. I don't have a marriage. I don't have a family. We don't have a home. We don't even have a dog. Why, what, what is this push in the culture to put the woman first? I'm like, for what? I, I actually owe her nothing. The only thing I owe her is a good time. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm respectful. 
and I want to make sure she has a good time. I want to have a good time with her, but put her before me as if I'm I'm some married man that has a serious obligation. I, I've been hearing that shit since I'm 20. Yeah. But even as a married man, at what point does she earn being put before you? You're the breadwinner. You're the provider. You're the protector. Mm -hmm. Like you're the leader of the family. At what point do the followers get put before the leader? Mm -hmm. So even as a married man with a family, she still can't come before you because putting her before you means that you wait to see what she decides. What happens in any situation? It does. It just doesn't benefit a man to ever give a woman that type of control because she's so fucking unpredictable. Well, yeah. well, well yeah. people conflate things. They they can conflate. The, the moral idea that as a man you're going to put your family and your kids before your own well-being but you can't actually as in the weekly schedule of your life put them before you because you're the breadwinner no, because they they don't see that like so if you have goals and you have ambitions you have like um a deadline almost so like they don't see the clock when they're asking you to take time off to go do this and do that so in the back of your head if you're giving this chick time you're in the back of your head like damn i could be doing this i could be doing that like you got shit you got to accomplish so they don't see the clock they're just like oh let's just go and do this so they don't respect it so if you're harsh it's because you know that like under that time constraint you're like i'm grinding right now i got shit i gotta fucking take care of and they don't yeah. see that they're just like oh why don't you just put it off or oh it's, a it's not that important no this isn't fucking important to me and this is where the fuck i'm going so and, it's either and, you allow me to have the space to do it or i'm pushing you to the side <laughs> Yeah, and experience helps because yeah. you, you got to go through it and deal with women to understand it, you know, because I, I used to see this girl for years. And if I gave her one day a week, she knew damn well that my week was so busy. Mm -hmm. It was a privilege just that I gave her that one day because that's right, literally right. the only day I had to myself and I gave it to you. But what do you think she said? Why can't it be three days a week? Yeah, yeah. but you know what? Let me, let me address something you just said, man. It's a great point as far as your family's well-being. Mm -hmm. That seems like, you know, that's the noble thing. But even when it comes to their well-being, their well-being is based on your well-being. Mm -hmm. So you your still well have to prioritize your well-being mm -hmm. over theirs because yeah. if you know if if it, there is impossible, like in concept, it sounds great, but it's impossible to prioritize their well-being without prioritizing yours because they're so dependent on your well-being. Mm -hmm. Like if you can't go, life is fucked up for yeah. them. If you can't, you know, if you if you shut down. Life is kind of a struggle for them at that point. And that's why I tell guys, man, it's a very, very, very serious decision to take on that responsibility mm -hmm. of having a family mm -hmm. because you are required to make some very, very tough decisions. So I ask guys all the time, okay, if you got one of your sons in a boat with you, you got two of your sons in a boat with you, one of them falls in the water, there are alligators there. You know for a fact the alligator is going to get there before you because the alligator is here. Mm-hmm. Do you dive in and try to save him and leave the son on the boat by himself? He's five. He don't know what the fuck to do with the boat. Your mm -hmm. phone is in your pocket. Yeah. You're in the water. You and your other son are fucking dead. That's you got harsh. a five-year-old son that's left. What do you do? Do you die for the son that's in the water? Or do you stay for the son that needs your guidance? And that's crazy because, again, that sounds harsh. But the, what you're illustrating is one dead kid... And but the father is still there for his other son, or now that boy has a dead father and a dead brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's left to the world. Yeah, you know he doesn't have a brother, an older brother to raise to help him. He doesn't have a father. So what are you so doing leave, in that situation, man? Listen, if I know for a fact, man, the Gators got him, man. I just like, shh, I'm not going in the water after, mm -hmm. man. See, this is why like, I don't even go places where I don't alligators. Know. I yeah. think frequent. I would do the best I can yeah. to just like. No, but that's the logical Save approach of it. Emotionally, yeah. you'd want to you'd yeah. want to jump in, but logically, you're like, I'm not fighting this alligator off. I'm going to yeah. die but too. See, this I, is why I, I'm never I mean, having uh, kids. If you know the gators already got him, yeah. it doesn't make sense There's to no go point. in the water. You know what I'm saying? If you if you're let's say you're here from the fucking parking lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he's going down river. The gators at him. The gators here. You're down. You're gonna dive in the water and leave your other son in the boat. I guess not. Man. Yeah, it, it, you know what I'm saying. And that's why you have to stay so keen and out of your fucking emotions yeah. because emotion will, yeah. will make you. Oh, I'm gonna go. And then you're like, the alligators got you now. You're like, like that was son. a stupid decision. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you have to just be in your logical headspace yeah. at all times, man. And it's tough to do. But when you really look at the value that a woman is bringing to your life, it's not so tough. How much does it take for you? 
to sacrifice the things you got to sacrifice to actually love a woman, mm -hmm. be in love with the woman. Boy, that's, you lose 50% of yourself when you fall in love. Mm -hmm. right. 50%. So if you never lost 50% of yourself, Savo, yeah, you, you weren't quite in love. You were almost there. I thought you was. Yeah, yeah. 50% of yourself is gone. <clears throat> right. I, you know, yeah, I wanted to, to add that. Like, I feel like for me, one of the most, the, the, the alpha shit is um, two things. It's the mindset. Wait a minute. What? He's still over there pondering what? that situation. Like I just that. like I was like, damn. He's like, damn, what would I do? I was just trying to save them both. Yeah, man. man. He's like, yeah, yeah. Am I a simp for that? No, <laughs> it's not me. You know, you, you're you're trying to protect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But and that's a rare situation. Who I've never heard. Yeah, of that but once you say it's to alpha anyone. to try to like save them both and, and get the best outcome you can like yeah, but, at least try for it because yeah. if you don't try you don't know yeah but it's alpha to also look at it from a logical perspective yeah. and say damn like that gator's mouth is about to crunch my son mm -hmm. if you go in what happens when you go in like the other gators you're never gonna yeah, see a gator in there by gators, himself yeah. and that's yeah. why and that's literally why when i take my son fishing we never go to gator and fetch the water mm -hmm. like we just never go there I, I'm never. I I know the type of situations that, and it, now this is harsh. Granted, I'll give you that now. It's harsh, but you have to make the decision that's best for your family, mm -hmm. not for your one son. So if you got two sons, a wife who's pregnant with your daughter, uh, you, you, what do you do? It's tough, man. It's a tough world out here, man. And you know, a woman will expect you to do the impossible. And that is just make sure everybody's okay at all times. And sometimes you just can't do that, man. Yeah. It's a tough world for a man out here, man. That's why I say don't give your shit up, man, just for a woman who's unworthy of it. So what I, what my definition of it is just the two things. It's the mindset first, and it's the power and the ability to, to balance your ego, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. everyone can do. You know, that's, yeah, that's why I be, you know, like when I started my channel, it wasn't called Afi Kingdom. It was called Dominus Mindset Raw Game. And, you know, I changed it later. But me being in control of my emotions and my egos is what makes me alpha. Can't nobody fuck with me unless I want to fuck, be fucked with. You know what I'm saying? And and even just being an alpha is being able to just, uh, you know, control your ego around other alphas and, and shit like that. And being able to balance because some guys think that they're alpha, but they're not really alpha because they feel like they need to be the top fucking guy all the time and shit and that's actually insecurity mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying so you know just like this brother right here like uh, it's a pleasure like you guys don't know but we know like it's a pleasure to be on here with him like i've been knowing him for years and even when when i got my channel deleted he the first person i called and he gave me that gas to keep going because i was kind of fed up like this is some fucking bullshit bro mm -hmm. right, right. And, and 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 people don't know that boa like helps me a lot he when we talk like he gives me the secrets and that's and that's alpha he doesn't we don't you know and i talk to a lot of people and people you can kind of tell when they don't want to tell you stuff but we have conversations like do it like this do it and it's like and he doesn't see me as a threat and i don't see him as a threat mm -hmm. just like earlier when we were talking and he said no he would because he knows that that's why i say heat up like we know how to mm -hmm. we, we we know how to interact with each other and that's it's a, it's, it's a respect thing and and that's being alpha too because like i said all these guys with, it, you know it, it, talking all this shit online they're talking about who's the most alpha but then that's contradictory to what it is if yeah. you were, if i'm a boss hey you guys you guys can think i'm fake as shit or whatever but guess what i still i, I get money and get bitches and i ain't got to show y'all mm -hmm. i ain't got to tell you if you think it or believe it that's whatever but i it's still me yeah, yeah. every know? every man is trying to prove himself in a different way and like we were talking about the other day every to myself though yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. to yourself well it's always about proving something to mm -hmm. yourself before you're trying to prove something to other people right, i think the right. youth is trying to prove something to other people because if they prove something to other people then indirectly they think they've proved to themselves that there's yeah. something because they yeah. need the outside validation but everybody does something different especially like young boys becoming men do something different to to prove that they're men to right. themselves right and my 13 year old now thin as reed want to play football thin <laughs> as shit i'm talking about this thin want to play football and, and i'm like okay shit oh yeah now, if you go for it, i'm not gonna let you quit now don't tell mm -hmm. me oh dad it's too tough nope yeah, let's go through. I, I would say to the young guys, uh, the, the best older brother advice that I could give to the young guys is try to prove yourself and try to prove your masculinity in responsible ways. Because we've done enough of the fighting in the street and stealing and, and doing stupid shit in our youth. Because at that point, when you're developing, that's how you're proving to yourself that you're about something right. that you can't be fucked with. 
you know, like this, the youngest brother, he stays with us. And then my boy Tyler stays with us. They're both feisty. They're both like known to, to want to press you and fight, but that's not what makes them men. What makes them men is that they hustled their ass off to pay rent this week. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Our rent went up significantly and they hustled their ass off, paid rent. There's gas in their car. That's the older I get, the more I'm like, that's my definition of manhood. Right. You know what I mean? Because we done all the, the, the fighting and, and fucking around and doing stupid shit and running from cops. Like we did all that. Yeah. So I just paid rent. So the GoFundMe is going to be in the description. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's basically the difference between being irresponsible and being responsible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really all it is. You know, responsibility starts with being responsible for your actions. OK, if you end up in jail for some shit, you did some shit to go to jail. Yeah. And. That as you grow older, it becomes okay. Well, listen. Oh, wait a minute. So if I don't make money, I don't fucking eat. Mm-hmm. You know? mm. I better make money. And it just you know you start to see that okay, being responsible for myself gives me gives me control. Mm-hmm. If I make money, I get to eat what I want to eat. If I don't, I got to like eat what the fuck somebody gives me. And it changes your, it changes your value within yourself. You build value in yourself by creating the life you want step by step. Because then you look back and say, oh shit. I am responsible for this shit that I have. And yeah, does it build ego? Yeah, you got to have it. But like Afi said, got to also be able to manage that motherfucker too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You've written 20 books now? 30. 30. Damn. When yeah. are you going to when are you going to lead off with that? You said you wanted to do 40 books altogether? Well, you know, this is the thing that people don't know. So, I wrote my books out of order. I have a lot of ideas, and I can't sit on my ideas. It'll drive me crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, I, I know I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be successful. I mean, I'm already there now. Everything that I've done, I've manifested first. Mm. Everything. Every single thing. You know what I'm saying? But we just, look, we just talked about, hey, we're going to do an in-person podcast. Just, that was recently, and now we're doing one. Mm-hmm. You know right, what I mean? Right. It's just, I mean, it's just every little thing. So, um, <laughs> So I got the children. So basically... It's like I'm writing for the future, so it's like my books are tears from the kids' books, and even the kids' books are advanced. The first kid books that I got is called uh, K- Cool Kid Adventures of um, Las Vegas. So what the book really does is it teaches. So basically, Cool Kids is like Barney, mm-hmm. right? Remember Barney comes yeah. in and Cool gets all in his dick. Yeah. So Cool Kid got the backpack on with all the shit the kids like, so they follow him. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what you gonna teach us today? So on this episode, he he goes to Vegas and they, it's, there's parts where they teach you facts about it, like Vegas was this was built and this and that, and it has the melodies. But the whole core of the book is to teach kids to to be open to mentorship and to 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 travel and shit like that. And it's and it's planted a seed. Then the next one. Then it's, uh, you know, what is it? Amazing shapes. It's about, um, about shapes. How they're all, how they're all different. But then when they go in, they're curious. So when they go in the community, the triangles. Like there's a part in the book where there's a pizza, and so they're they all connect. The circle connects with the pizza. Then they cut it. The box. So they so they oh, so they're, they're looking to find their own. So it's just mm. all these things. And then you know we get down to the say like my dating books. They come down in the middle. Then when you got the key books, it's all inner game, you know, internal confidence. So it's like it's written. And the, 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 last, the last book I got is the shit that's the dark shit, the $250 book. is That's the shit that I don't want to teach people, but if you got money or you're serious about bitches or whatever, you can get it. But, it's, but you're not. You're supposed to read it in that order. So basically, all my books, is, it's called Master of Everything. Mm-hmm. So it's like a set. So that 30 books is a set. Now, after that 30, then I'm going on to new ideas. So it's actually a set of books about everything. And then like in the middle, then we go into the travel. Like I got a travel series. It's, it's called International uh, Keys is the first one. It teaches you the principles of travel, why people don't do it, what you need to do. Then the second one, I exercise a different element. Now that you know how to travel, then it becomes International Player, which I teach you how to build rotations because that's what people do. But I teach you about that first. Then once you do that, now the third one is a story. So now you have the the, the, the the structure, the awareness. Now you get to hear the story. If you didn't get the background first, the story don't make sense. Mm-hmm. So that's how I write all the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, Afi is one of those dudes that comes up everywhere. You know how sometimes guys ask, like, how do you know this dude who says he gets bitches really gets bitches? I'm like, I know, because if I'm sitting over here wondering, who the fuck is this dude? He comes up everywhere. He pops up everywhere. You're actually one of those dudes I think I saw before I was into Red Pill or any of this shit. Yeah. Just circulating. And then your name comes up everywhere. At big people talk about you. Yeah, you know it makes people wonder, like, what? What is this dude? What is? What does he do? And then he's like, guess well, what? I got, all, I got thirty all, books. It's all on purpose too. That's the fucked up part. 
plan all of this shit, bro. Perfect. Real quick before we move to the next question, briefly, how did you guys both get into the red pill scene in the Manosphere? Man, I was uh, I was just listening to content, and I saw a guy with an interesting name, Black Ram Three One Three, and I said, "Man, that's a hell of a name. What the what is this shit about? What is a Black Ram? Is there a Black Ram?" Mm-hmm. So I go and listen to it. He had his first channel, Black Ram for Vengeance. He stopped doing that channel because the guidelines changed, mm-hmm. so he just veered away from it. And man, I listened to some he had, man, and I said, "Man, you know what? It's the first time I ever heard another guy talk about the things that I apply to my life." So mm-hmm. I was like. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. And I look, I think he had about maybe 8,000 subscribers. I was like, oh, shit, people like this. Tragic. So it already applied to your purpose. It just emphasized it. Yeah, 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 that's it, man. I just said, man, you know what? Well, let me talk my shit because I'm, I'm going to take y'all somewhere. Because, mm-hmm. you know, guys can talk. You say, if you don't know a guy, you don't know how he's lived. And so I say, so I'm just going to tell these guys about the shit I've learned in my life, man, that works. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've never had a bad relationship. I've had some bad situations, but I caused them shits. But I've never had like, oh, she broke my heart. Or, oh, man, I thought she was this, but she wasn't. A, oh, man, whatever happened? She cheated on me. She... I've never been cheated on, man, because mm-hmm. I've never had a wife. Mm-hmm. Only your fucking wife can cheat on you. Mm-hmm. Oh. I've never had a wife. so That's a drop. And so I just started dropping it, man. And uh, I, I didn't even know mm-hmm. there was a red pill space. I just know that there's a cat that talks about the things I live by. Yeah. So shit, I'm going to talk too. Absolutely. Yeah. Ivy, what got you in? Um, okay, so Tariq, Na- it, it, there's two spaces. So, like, Tariq Nashi brought me to the dating space because he had a podcast called Mac Lessons Radio in 2000. And podcasts weren't popular then. People used to actually roast me for listening to talk. Mm-hmm. And after a while, he, he used to do a show every week. And then he came out with the Hidden Colors uh, documentary, and it blew up. And no offense, but I'm like, I want to listen to Tariq not shame to hear games. I don't want to hear about this black shit over here. So it used to be a Lucario commercial. It used to come on, check out the bad boy membership. And then one time I was like, all right, I'm going to check this shit out because I don't want to hear about this, this this shit. You know what I mean? I can YouTube it. Yeah, so. we just had him here last month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. Shout the, out Lucario. The, the Lucario made me to a dating coach. I didn't want to be one. I, oh, he sorry. interviewed me. Yeah, he interviewed me and then he interviewed me and then... uh. I, w- I was excited to be interviewed because I was watching his podcast, and at that time I only had 70 subs. And he interviewed me. He interviewed me because this guy, Ron Williams, and Ron, not Ron Williams, Ron Wills. Uh, basically, Ron Wills, I contacted Ron Wills for a consultation four years ago. So I said, you know, Ron Wills, I got this rotation of 20. And I want to, I'm sorry, I'm dead ass. One for every book. Yeah. But 32. It can pile up fast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, people don't understand. See, that's the thing about the rotations. It can be high as you go because I deal with bitches on my time and my mm-hmm. and my terms. That's what people get. People act, people make it seem like I'm just catering to 20 bitches at one time. No. Yeah, no. I'm like a superstar to these hoes. I might call this bitch once a week. Do you think there's a whatever. point where you grow out of the rotation stage or is it, is it a young man thing? I don't or? think I want to. Uh, with the <laughs> <No>. rotation? <laughs> I'm shaking his head. Because yeah. a lot of these red pill guys are married. They have a family. And, Man, but, most I mean, of these guys don't need to be doing shit. I'm going to just keep yeah, it 100, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's why That's why I like BOA because he was the first real cat to me because that, oh, that's that's how I started making the video. So I seen I saw Lucario. That was to open my eyes. And then I started seeing Minister Jap. And then I liked the single mom videos because I never heard people roast single moms. Yep. And, that, and that was like I knew it, but I never heard nobody say it. And then um, so that those were that's what introduced me to the space. And then I seen AMS blow up. And I fucking love it. And then and when I, but before when I seen the dating coaches, they were all like characters and shit. And I'm like, man, they ain't gonna like me. And then I seen them cussing and just talking shit. I'm like, I'm gonna do this shit. And so when I started doing YouTube at first, I was just making fun of people because their game was weak. What year did you start YouTube? Like <laughs> uh, beginning 20, of 2018, April 2018. 2018. And oh, yeah. I thought these cats was weak. These How about you? December 2017, I uploaded mm-hmm. my first joint. Oh, yeah. Yep. It took me a whole year, man. I, I, I wasn't even doing it for money, man. I was good. You know, I was getting paper. You know, I had a, a vending company, man. I had a state account. So mm-hmm. I was getting money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, so I went, I was like, oh, man, I can say what I want to say. And nobody can call my job and say, you know, this guy here. No, yeah. my contract going to pay Me and dog. my brothers, my, my parents were going through an, a, a divorce. And we we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, stuck in this apartment complex. Everything's so far away from each other and uh, down south. So we're stuck in this apartment complex. No kids around. Uh, parents are divorced. They're out working, doing drugs or drinking. And we had nothing else to do but film. So uh, we've been we've been on YouTube for like I don't even know Since the exact. We were, we were doing like, like VHS first year you could videos. get on Kevin yeah. used to write scripts in kindergarten in Crayola crayon and yeah, like and staple I, them together. And, and, and shit. I actually remember 
when YouTube became a thing and I was like, oh shit, we could do digital video because before then we were fucking around with the family VHS camera making yeah, movies. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Yeah, I right. remember going on Google Video and searching up videos. What and- YouTube's so different back then? It's weird. It's Dude, just different. getting on that platform early on, like everyone who got in early while I was undersaturated mm-hmm. got so much um got so much attention because there was nothing on there. Now that it's so oversaturated. So that's why I'm kind of like thinking about Rumble because if yeah, Rumble that's- takes off, like, like think about TikTok. Yeah. Like I'm not even crazy about TikTok. The whole I missed that sucks. one, bro. So, but dude, yeah, right when yeah. it came out, if you made TikToks, you have a fucking huge following now. I'm glad yeah, you brought that yeah. up when we were talking about it yesterday. That's why I also brought up the uh, cancellation of Andrew Tate and him moving to Rumble. Um, I don't know how YouTube would feel about it or, or, or whatever, but um, how, how do you guys feel about Rumble? Should we get on it early? It's like a stock. You jump on it early and it blows up, but like it, it's Understand. not a bad I'm, idea. I'm, I'm getting on it. Yeah, I'm I made my you know account. Be OA, you get on it and see how it does yeah. for you. Yeah, I'm gonna get on it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, dude. See. And the best part is, so it's like YouTube is just, but it's, it's just yeah, it's Rumble? YouTube's competitor, yeah. but it's more right, free but speech. I, but, but I mm. wonder if it's only gonna suit the canceled people at the moment because it's the only place you can actually yeah, find. Yeah, them. But, but it doesn't it, matter. Eventually, if it gets to a certain size, it's gonna. Even Patreon has started yeah. to implement guidelines now. Well, I think YouTube has community guidelines now. What that you can't curse and shit like hey, that. Hey, you, you, you can curse. They're a little bit more lenient than YouTube, but there's certain shit you Andrew Tate couldn't well, be on Patreon private. right now. Yeah, they Patreon. shut him down. If he was on Patreon, they shut him down too. To like YouTube's B- getting B- more B- and more restricted. The only thing that's private is www.boa.com. Hell yeah, B-O-A, that's it. Boa, let me ask you because I didn't really know. Do does because I just post on Patreon. Does Patreon promote at all? No, that's the paywall. Because I, because I, because I, because yeah, yeah, I'm paywall. going as I'm yeah. on there as a do they do like do they like no, suggest nothing. they don't do nothing. No, it's nothing. just a paywall. Everybody, you get over there, oh, you okay. send them over there yourself. Actually, I thought about it. But the I, only reason I had a Patreon for a little bit it was because I was following AMS's lead. When I started talking game, yeah. the first thing dude said was, "Ain't no way you actually get bitches." So I'm like, I'll do what AMS does. Like I'll show my girls on Patreon because I can't just show my girls on YouTube because they're gonna you, see the YouTube. Hey, let me let me tell you a funny. Two minute story, real quick, just real quick, right. because that's how I quit YouTube. It one of the times because I was just trolling. I was being funny, and then I, it, it it turned around on me because I was in uh, I was in uh, Philippines. Hmm. So basically, I was on Philippines, and I went live. I was fucking this bitch, right? I I, I seen the Patreon video later. I was fucking this bitch, and I I'll was, send you the video of me fucking this bitch later. Yeah. So I was taping it, and she was riding me. So. I'm looking at the chat and I'm saying this was on your Patreon. Well, this was on YouTube IG Live and of you fucking. Yeah, and I taped it. (laughs) Yeah, and I taped it and put it on Patreon. So I, you know, is this why your YouTube channel got deleted? No, no, (laughs) it's not. It's not. No, so no, so back then IG didn't archive the shit. Yeah, it 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 was 24 hours and automatically deleted. Mm -hmm. So when I did that shit, I got the laptop out and manually did that shit. So I'm just trolling. And I'm like, yeah, I got this. I got this bitch. I'm, I put on the link on the community tab. Like, yeah, we want to see the live sex tape. I'm just fucking around, and I got fucking hella patreons, and I'm and I, and, and, I, and I'm mad. I'm like, man, I'd be giving these niggas all this game, and all I gotta do is say I'm fucking the bitch. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They followed the Patreon oh, because you shit. fucked a girl on Instagram Live. Yeah, because I had to, because I put it on Patreon. But I was oh, kind of insulted because I work fucking hard and shit, and it's like, so that's basically using Patreon so, like on OnlyFans. To your consultation uh, while you're yeah. fucking. Hey, I never made that. That I what? Damn, that wasn't pretty advanced. That might be our next, no. next yeah. business no, venture. No. That's something else we got to stop shying away from. Yeah, fucking OnlyFans. Yeah. You ain't got the fuck on OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. Some of the biggest creators on OnlyFans don't do anything sexual. Mm-hmm. There's money on OnlyFans. Yeah. It's just another paywall. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty much all it is. Yeah. No, it is, and it was intended to be like a Patreon. But then the girls that share nudes on there, yeah. or have people pay for nudes rather, they gave it the name of yeah, it right. being no, a website right. for Dude. nudes. No, exactly. Now you can't live down that name. So if you're if you're a businessman, and or or you're a content creator, right? You're BOA, yeah. and you say, "Hey, I'm BOA. You can go ahead and find me on OnlyFans." What's the first people gonna think? They're gonna think, "Yeah, man, I, don't give shit. Dick pics. I don't give a shit." I have a loyal following, man. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. I have, I have. Thousands of guys there that are just fucking loyal, and they know when I say follow me only fans, they know BOA ain't finna be yeah. over there doing no, yeah. you know, no raw dog I, I shit quit like that. Because I was all you, you guys only care about pussy, so I went all Patreon. I took all my videos off of YouTube. Mm-hmm. I was pissed because I was grinding at that time. Because I, because back then you had to have four thousand watch time. Uh, in the in the thousand subs to go live, you didn't go stream yours. So I was grinding. Yeah. Remember, you used to fuck with me like, damn, you going live again? Like yeah. I was just grinding. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm doing all this shit. 
Puff people ain't fucking with my shit. So I have went a Patreon exclusive only. I took my shit off YouTube. Like fuck it, yo, you want to pay for shit? You gonna pay for the for the regular mm-hmm. shit too? And I, I was pissed. All right, guys. Well, hey, we do this for our NFT holders who mm-hmm. have sent in questions. And guys, if you are a holder, sending questions when we have guests, we always are the first to let you know in the Discord. We bring guests here to answer your questions, mm-hmm. and BOA and Afi Kingdom are here to answer them today. So, mm-hmm. Rock, give every holder's name one by one. Yep. Let's, and we got some uh, good questions. Give these voice and um, heads up, we might have BOA and Afi, or just one of the two, um, in our Discord for a uh, Discord exclusive Q and A. But uh, for now, we got a lot of good questions. So this question comes from 907 King. Shout out King, one of our holders, and he says, "Do either of you have goals pertaining to your family legacy?" Man, I've got three sons. Oh my, no, shit! I thought yeah, my legacy is set. I just, I don't talk about a man because yeah. you know my oldest son he ain't with it. Uh, my shit, my youngest son he ain't. He's a little tyke. Which one did I meet? Uh, you met my oldest son. That's the oldest son. Yeah, okay. that's my oldest son. So, but this ain't something I talk about. See, here's what people got to understand. I'm on. I, what I do is I give men advice based on what I've lived and learned. Mm-hmm. I'm not a motherfucker that come over. Look at what BOA does. Look at how BOA live. Every now and then I show up with some fly shit, but it's always live. You got to see me in person. Or every now and then I post something. But I have a specific mission, and it is not to like rub what I have in guys who don't have it face. Because mm-hmm. most guys don't want to see aren't going to take what you show them as motivation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Because most Facts. most guys, if they really true to themselves, they aren't motivated by that shit. They're motivated about being able to control their lives. Okay, I got to go to this shit job where, you know, or I got to go to a good job where I still don't like my fucking supervisor. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I look at it, man, and I say, my personal life is my personal life. And I want to be able to govern when I show it, as opposed yeah. to just, putting it out there as a fucking as a as a social media post so yeah man my legacy is in there and the reason it is i wouldn't have had any sons but i'm my father's only son so if i die without a son the entire bloodline dies my dad had eight sisters so the name that i carry i'm it so yeah. so you did prioritize legacy then? yeah i prioritize legacy yeah. I, like i've always been the the last i've been the last with my father's name all of his sisters you know they marry take the name on somewhere and mm-hmm. it would even if they didn't marry when they do, they take the last name of someone else. So I already knew what I had to do, man. My sons know that. I, I, I teach them that. They understand who they are. And I, they gave them a sense of value forever. I tell them, man, you're the last. You're the last of a dying breed. Mm-hmm. Whatever you do with this is what's going to be done with it. And that's how I kept him in line, not fucking up, not getting in trouble, not doing all that weirdo shit. And I also had to make sure I made paper to make sure he didn't have to go out there and do that shit that I had to do. So, yeah, my, my legacy is intact, man. I'm done. Fucking done. Mm. What about you, Oppie? I'm the father of many. I live through every rule of my books and content, and I am a leader of many. But on some real shit, um, <laughs> I honestly think, well, it's it's kind of two things. For one, I, I feel like my life isn't going to truly open up until I'm at my home base, which is abroad. So because it's like whatever I set up relationship wise, it's not going to last because I'm not I don't plan on staying here. So I actually think I'm going to be one of those. When I was 20, I used to say when I was 50, I was going to just find me a young one and settle down. But now that I'm moving into 50, it's like, nah, that's not old enough. Cause I, cause, because it seemed like when we were, remember when 50 seemed old, when we yeah. were younger? Like, well, I remember my mom was 40. It just seemed like she was 60. But now that I'm 40, it's like, no, hell no, I ain't ready. To, no, yeah. no, no, no. So I think I'm going to be one of them 60-year-old cats who just going to get them a young one abroad or something, mm-hmm. just whoever I like at the time. I'm gonna be, I mean, I'm going to be successful, older, money. I'm going to just be able to pick whoever the fuck I want and just have a baby and have her. I, 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 when I say love child, I don't, I don't see myself meeting a woman from this day and then me falling in love and then let's do it. Like, yeah. I just, it more of it just, hey, I, this is what I want. And just find somebody on the page. I don't think I'm gonna just find some chick now, hit it raw, and be like, "All right, now." Nah. Let me I, let me tell you something about what you just said about like when 50 seemed old, but as you're approaching it now, it seems like you want to keep going. Yeah, it's coming from a young dude. But the best of my parents' generation is badass. Okay, every entertainer that my parents grew up listening to. Do you think they thought that their 20 year old kids were gonna go and see those same entertainers still selling out arenas? Like, mm-hmm. I think that shit is so badass, and it gave me a different perspective on aging. Now, I know that's celebrities, mm-hmm. but now, who, Rock, who's the biggest artist right now that you guys listen to? Or who's I, the I biggest? I don't listen to him, okay, but the biggest but who's artist the biggest? is Drake. Okay, Drake, Drake. is not going to be selling out arenas at 70, I guarantee it. No. I guarantee it. Everybody that we're growing up, we're growing up on is fly-by-night, and 
so that gave me a different perspective on aging again even though it's you know you might say it's the celebrity world and shit that i'm comparing it to but i know i know you're an example of it you're an example of it and i know a lot of bad motherfuckers in their 40s and 50s that have showed me that i'm really not gonna get old until like 70 if i choose absolutely and that's exactly how I see myself yeah. aging. If God is going to bless me to be able to be here until like I'm 80, I will be old once I'm like 69, 70 that, that, years that's old. That's why I want to direct, bro, because my age don't matter. Mm-hmm. If I got an eye for creativity, I got it. It's not like you're yeah. old, you can't but act you no know more. What? No, I'm you, but you know what? Clearly, it doesn't matter acting either because you got yeah. Stallone, 76, still doing yeah. fight scenes. But well, he's an icon, though. He's mm-hmm. an icon, but, but yeah. now look at... Why is his name? You're going to name another icon. No, Go hold, ahead. On, hold on. I mean, hold on. But, but, you I, know, when we talk about icons, man, you have to, got, icons have to start off. Yeah. Right, like, right, right. He wasn't an icon. He became an icon yeah. because he never stopped. Yeah. He never yeah. Oh, I'm Clint Eastwood still this. acting in front yeah. of the camera and directing and in fucking directing. 94. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And, so, yeah. you know, and I look at it like this, man. Even at that point, I met a chick. I was in ATL, man. Uh, I can't remember why the hell I was over there, man, but I drove over there. Of course, yeah. I wasn't flying yet. But <laughs> yeah. So I was in ATL, man, staying at a um, new hotel. Man, I was downstairs eating breakfast. Chick sat beside me, man. We chopped it up. I mean, she wasn't my type or anything like that, but she had good energy, man, so we chopped it up. She said they were over there from uh, North Carolina because her dad, who's military, mm-hmm. um, of course, he, his dad, her dad is 62. And um, she said they all, they come over there as a family, and what they do is they all get together, and instead of sitting around eating pork and bullshit off a grill, they come over there and they hike through the mountains. That's so right. they over there 20 deep hiking through the mountains. Mm-hmm. Say her dad beats all of them. She showed That's me a picture right. of her dad. Motherfucker got eight pack. I'm talking about a Dunnis cut, 62 years Hell old. Yeah. Lean as fuck. Killing them all. So I say, man, as long as you take care of yourself, mm-hmm. you don't get old. An aging body is an uh, and bodies. Your body's gonna age, right? But an old yes, body in our thirties, bro. An, an old body is a body that wasn't properly cared right. for. Now, now, I will say this because this is true advice. If you are white. You must be extra vigilant when aging because we will get old faster. <laughs> yeah. We will. We don't. He said it. No. Not me. It's, it's, it's <laughs> definitely true. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely true. But I, I, I cosign. That. I, I almost think, and, and I've tried to pinpoint what causes that, and I've boiled it down to: I think white people should use lotion and shouldn't drink as much. I think that's really what makes white people age yeah. faster. What's that, Bill Burskett? He's like, y'all motherfuckers gotta it like spread the lotion like. Over your body. You ever wonder why your dick look like a looks brand new, but your feet look like a prehistoric riverbed? <laughs> yeah, he said lotion isn't isn't just for your dick. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, but that, I, that's my take on aging. And that and testosterone. You said lotion yeah, ain't just for yeah. Your and, and yeah. that's really the main thing, man. So I, I just feel like, man, and, and you got to do some shit you love. Mm-hmm. Slice the long, still doing what he love. He ain't got to, motherfucker. Filthy rich. He does it, man, because he loves it. Wait, a new role? Ah, right, yeah, yeah, I could do. Th- nah, that's what's the name. I could do that. Thing. You want me to do another? Adrian, I can do it. Yeah. You just never stop, man, because yeah. if you feel fucking good, you just never feel old, yeah. man. Yeah. It's just like I'm what seventy. Yeah. yeah, I was watching this uh, documentary right quick, man, with these guys. They were just showing guys, man, who used to be bodybuilders, mm-hmm. like professional bodybuilders, the yeah. IBF pearl yeah. that you know juice up mm-hmm. and uh those guys who quit young man some of those guys one of those guys 70 years old man motherfucker got six pack of course it don't look like a yeah. 25 yeah. 22 year old six pack but his fucking abs are rock man his fucking pecs are still you know where they're supposed to be of course he's lost a lot of the bulk but to be in that type of shape man and just living living a high quality life Man, you can't complain about that. Yeah. This shit just about living a high quality life. Dude, dude, just, just, just look at Snoop. Snoop don't drop albums for money. He don't care if he yeah. debuts that number. He don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. He's Snoop. He just he just want to make just music. Just never stop, man. Yeah. What's the next question, Rock? Give the holders name. And uh, so I'm bringing up this question now because it kind of stems into what we were just talking about. So uh, White and Cuddly, one of our holders, he asks, should you enjoy your life when you're young, when you can still run up a hill, or just work, 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 so you might sit in a comfy chair when you're old? Mm. Balance. Mm-hmm. Balance, That's what man. I was thinking. Like you got to balance, man, because you you drive. You can never. I guess you can never outwork the need to relax and enjoy life. Sometimes, mm-hmm. and whatever level you on, yeah. If you got ten dollars, you can't relax and enjoy life like you could if you had ten thousand. But fuck it. Like, what do you like? What do you do? What do you enjoy? So some of the things you do as a child, man, never let that shit go. My yeah. dad taught me how to fish when I was four years old. I was baiting my own hook, taking my own fish out by the time I was six. Mm-hmm. And he showed me how to clean them, showed me how to. And right now, man, that's one of the most relaxing shits I do. So as long as I can get on a boat, get out there, pull them big motherfuckers out of there, throw them back, film that shit while I'm doing it. One of the greatest joys of my life. Deep sea fishing, 
all of that shit. So what's that thing, man, that gives you that, that, that keeps your youthful exuberance mm-hmm. hype? And another thing, fountain of youth. Don't ever let your body get to the point where you can't fuck. Yeah. It's over. Mm-hmm. It's over. Because that rejuvenation of we need that as men. Mm-hmm. That's why women were created to be able to absorb, release, replenish. If you don't have that in your life, man, it's just one of the things like imagine waking up and you just can't ever get it up anymore. Yeah. Your manhood takes a shot. I don't care who you are. It takes a shot. They, say, they say your sex life takes a hit, but your whole quality of life takes your a hit. Your whole quality Because doesn't your life. testosterone level start to dip at that same time and that kind of like... That's hurts. true, but you know something? Regardless of religious beliefs, it's about the only thing we could provably say we're here for outside of religious beliefs is to procreate and keep the population going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you take that aspect away from an animal, even a human animal, internally and subconsciously, you feel worthless. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. give you a exa- quick example, man. All the alpha animals in the animal kingdom Mm-hmm. An alpha male lion has a pride roughly for about two years. Mm-hmm. He's the man. Since so strong, other other alpha males, they, they, they just don't test him. They're like, oh, nah, scent too strong. But as he's going around marking his scent, mm-hmm. replenishing two, three times a year, losing yeah. his testosterone like that. But his goal is to use his testosterone to create his next mm-hmm. generation. Mm-hmm. Scent starts to get weak. There's a guy who comes along and says... Oh, my scent's stronger than his. He comes in, takes over the pride. Mm-hmm. Within a, within six months to a year, that guy's dead. Yeah, because he never gets another pride. It's over for him. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if the 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 alpha grizzly, man, once he loses the top spot, they push his ass all the way all down way to out. the end of the stream. Mm-hmm. Like he goes to the back end, and within six months to a year, he's dead. Like that's just the way it is, man. If you can't do the one thing that we can all that we were all born to do. It's old for you. A, man. a lot of young kids, though, that like are, are struggling with like not getting it up, and, and it shouldn't be like that because they're young, but they, they get like erectile dysfunction just simply because of like performance anxiety. Performance anxiety, and it, it definitely stems from what you eat and how you eat and how you maintain so, your body. I, they bro. Say, they say jerking off and watching porn too much too just eventually yeah. crushes your. Because you know, you know, the thing about it is this, man. It's kind of like women who use toys. Eventually. That's what that that's what they're into. Yeah. That mm-hmm. fantasy they create in their mind, plus that 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 inanimate object is all that works for them at that point. It's the same thing with porn after a while, man. Cause it's kind of like with, with it's kind of like with, with drinking alcohol. Okay, you start out, man. You may drink a beer. Yeah. Okay, you like beer. Okay, you're drinking a twelve pack of beer a day. You get to something heavier. I don't want to drink all that beer. It kind of make me heavy. I don't feel. Mm-hmm. You get in some heavier before you know it. You're drinking. You know, one you, you're drinking moonshine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and at that point, you you build up such a tolerance for something, man, that it just at the, by the time nice. you build up such a tolerance for someone, you can take the best of it. You're ruined. What that's, advice? You're ruined what way. advice would you guys give to to young kids like newly in the game that struggle with performance anxiety? Though, what advice would you give? <laughs> the I'll, fear of not performing well in bed. <laughs> Because <laughs> what, what, what did you say it's like when you're when you're about to go sleep with a woman, right? So you know, what I'm I was talking telling about? him earlier. Yeah, I was yeah, saying yeah. I used to think of it like I was entering a boxing ring and the girl was my opponent because she talked enough shit that it made me think of a press conference before a boxing match. It's a lot when a less girl's saying like I'm crazy, you can't handle me. I'm like yeah. this is not a press conference, and it's a lot less pressure on the female because you know all they got to do is just be. You know it what I mean? Later, you know the majority of it in my in my estimation goes back to how you view yourself. Yeah. See, I have never viewed ever in my life have I viewed myself as someone who needs to please the woman. The first girl I hit was a train, so I didn't even know the bitch. The first bitch. Oh, uh, that's fuck. awful. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't awful to me because I didn't yeah. want to. No, that was oh, good. That's awful. Because back asshole. in our days, being a virgin, you get your ass roasted. Yeah. And I, that, I didn't never lie, but I used to be trying to tuck like it. Everybody taught their tech stories. I'd be like, damn, where's, let me go to the bathroom. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I was happy to be like, man, y'all have pussy. What the fuck you talking about? You know what I mean? But. Uh, that second chick, uh, she she was she was one of my neighbors, and so she was a big girl. So I used to just practice on her. That was her job. So I practiced and I was able to like get positions without taking my dick out and shit. And then so when I got to my third body, I was on expert level. Mm-hmm. But just real quick, I don't want to taint the youth, but I'm gonna just keep it real for you for the, for the anxiety. I just popped the rhinos, bro, on the new bitches. It's simple. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and and I'll tell you one more thing, man. Just always understand. No matter how inexperienced you are at sex, most girls aren't good at it. Mm-hmm. 
All no matter how talk bad you girls. think you are, yeah. you ever have a girl say to you, "Bro, these hoes are sorry in bed, bro." What do all women say when you, before you're about to sleep with them? Oh, you can't handle this. It's, then you get in bed with them and just lay there like the rest. Exactly. Of the world. exactly. That's what got me. I got over performance anxiety through experience. I don't recommend that guys be looking up videos on how to get over performance anxiety. Get out there and fuck, and then just you'll see. Yeah. I used to be a pleaser until I I had enough sex to realize you know I don't even I don't even like you enough yeah. to, wanna to, like, to please you want to please what have you yeah. done and also I like to fuck how I want to fuck yeah. I, so if you express to me like I like to fuck like this it's like yeah well I like meals made for me I haven't seen a lot of that shit going <laughs> right. on right. Seen a lot of that. Right. You, you know it's it's yeah. that and then it's also the fact that yes exactly like Mark said men have performance anxiety mm -hmm. as young men when we first start having sex because there's all this pressure put on us yeah. so we get clowned by the girls in the neighborhood who tell all the other girls in the neighborhood he can't fuck or he didn't even really know what he was doing and it traumatizes us into learning how to fuck better because we don't want to repeat the same mistake and then i realized since girls get patted on the back for average sexual performances a lot of women, grown ass sexy women, yeah, never good. learned how to fuck because they never had the same pressure. Yeah. They never had a man say, "What are you doing? Like, what is that yeah. move you doing? Put your leg down. What is it? What is that shit?" They get credit just for giving it up. Yeah, you yeah. Know, if, I, if a guy's, oh man, yeah, you know, I had a wonderful time because I got off because I'm not used to getting off. So. I had a great yeah, time. Yeah, the, the older I got, the more I started n not being an asshole, but just telling girls. Like, girls be like, how's that feel? And instead of just being like, I'm so happy I'm getting it. Yeah. It's great. I'm like, I, I, I honestly don't do that. I don't like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, 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 or do it more like this. Yeah. Like, why not give some instruction? You'd be the first to tell me yeah. I can't fuck and, if and, I didn't and fuck And let me you give right. you guys a cheat code. A lot of times, just remember, the way you perform has something to do with the fact that you're just not enjoying the experience. Mm -hmm. Because especially your first time, you have this idea of how amazing this is going to be because guys who have experience have told you, oh, man, but they're not telling you about the bad experiences. Yeah, they're man. telling you about the one experience they can recall that they've been trying to fucking replicate mm -hmm. since that time happened. Just remember, a lot of times you're not enjoying yourself. Don't take that on you. Like Savo said, let the woman know that, well... Just stop. If you're not enjoying yourself, man, don't blow your first. Don't blow. Don't listen, man. Don't blow your first nut on an unenjoyable experience. Well, I, Hold back and just ah, oh, well. Practice I'm not really retention. enjoying this. Yeah, shit. Re real quick, I'll say this, and then we'll get back to the holders' questions. The one thing I wish older relatives in my family, like men in my family, had told me when I was still a virgin was I wish they told me how much trouble sex was going to be. No one ever said that. When I was, I didn't get laid till I was 18. So all the way up to 18, I had older cousins and older uncles and even my dad and even Grandpa Mike at certain mm -hmm. points. Remember, Grandpa Mike was still buying me uh, Virgin Mobile uh, phone cards for my phone. And he was like, and speaking of Virgin, what is up with you? <laughs> and this, is, this is my grandfather who's like not really open about sex or none of that. But everybody was breaking my balls. So that I was, was witty. That was good. Right? That's so, some shit I would do. That was so good. I was on a mission. I was like, I've got to get laid to get not only for my own self-respect, but so that the men in the family will Avoid respect the bullshit. me. Yeah. So I could show up with, with girls and shit. And now I show up with a different girl every other day and everybody's just like, and now I'm 26, is no longer cute. They're like, who are all these hoes? <laughs> who yeah. are right. these hoes? Right. But yeah, what right. nobody told me was, hey man, when you start having sex and you start having sex with a lot of different women, there is a whole lot you need to protect yourself from. Not only STDs, but protecting your home from getting violated, protecting your car from getting smashed up if you end up leaving the girl and she still likes you and she wants to break the fucking windows on your car. Yeah. All that shit. You gotta no make them. You gotta make or break up shit. with you. And, and, and this is why I'm so adamant about young guys not cold approaching, mm -hmm. because you're not experienced enough to know if the girl really likes you or not. But if a girl shows you attraction, confirmation, or some interest, or some extra smile, or something, yeah. first learn what it looks like for a woman to let you know she's liking you, because she's not gonna walk up to you and say, "Hey, guess yeah. what." I like you, but you have to understand, man, that you're always going to have a better experience with a woman who truly likes you. Because even if you when underperform, you already have your foot in the door, right? even if you underperform, she probably won't go out and say, this motherfucker, man, mm. she's likely to be more understand. And I tell a woman, man, be honest about it being your fucking first time, man. You get a lot of leeway like that, and it teaches you the benefit of keeping a 100 with a woman. Because mm -hmm. the result is going to be the result, regardless of whether you lie, act like you're experienced, or you just be, hey, listen. You know, I, I don't and don't brag on your dick. Don't do it. Yeah. Rock, give the holder's name and give the next question. Uh, next one is again from 907 King. He says, how would you provide younger siblings slash family members with guidance? Get a mentor for sure. That's what yeah. I did. Yeah. 
and, and let me say this because all these fucking guys be crying oh, i ain't got no dad i didn't have no dad either my dad died when i was three and i found me some mentors i don't wait for some guy to see great and with me i figured out that i wanted to be great and i needed to find out what skills i needed to learn and who i needed to learn them from okay I say, man, just uh, I mean, you just give them what you want to. It's not the pro- it's not the fact that you can't give guidance and advice. You just got to accept the fact that they may not always be open to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your job is one thing, making sure they have the information. If they have the information, okay, they may bump their head a couple of times, but if you keep feeding them the information, just give them the information, detach yourself from the process because the information is going to save their ass one day. They'll, My granddad taught me it. so many things when I was a kid that I didn't comprehend. I knew I knew, what, I knew the words, but mm-hmm. I was like, that shit doesn't apply to my life. Bam, I hit 15. I'm like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. That's what granddad was talking about. Yep. Then I hit 18. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. That's what Uncle Junebug was talking about. So that information, man, if you give it, you just got to trust the process that the worst thing you can do is you know, try to beat them over the head with the information because then they reject it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, Just yep. feed them the information. Their response is just their response as long as they store the information. Mm-hmm. Your main goal is to make sure they store the information, but you can't, oh, man, they won't listen to me. So the fuck what? Mm-hmm. You didn't listen to people at once, at nice. once upon a time. Yeah. You turned out okay. Mm-hmm. I, I got a question for you, Bill. What Since just like a percentage, and this is more like for the audience too, like what's, your, like what's your percentage of like what do you, do you think that anybody is capable of learning game with a good teacher? And if not, like what's the percentage of guys you think that is that, that can? Man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think the real game is just prioritizing yourself. Mm-hmm. Game, the it's game right, comes right. automatically to you if you prioritize yourself because you don't do sucker shit. Mm-hmm. The reason that guys want game is so they don't do sucker shit. Yeah. And if you prioritize yourself, you just never do it. Oh, there's nothing a woman can present to me that's going to make me prioritize her over me. I just, I, I, there's just nothing because I'm, I'm instantly inclined to prioritize myself. So anytime some sucker shit come up, I'm like, nah, that's sucker shit. You know, regardless yeah. of what someone has told me before, I'm going to protect myself. And in protecting yourself, you protect everything you build. You don't end up in a fucking legal marriage and you're a millionaire and a woman walks away with $500,000 of your money because mm-hmm. it's some sucker shit. Mm-hmm. You know it's sucker shit. So why do it? So I think the, the greatest thing is still always going to be learning how to prioritize yourself. That's just the greatest thing. That's All true. game comes from prioritizing yourself. How do you not end up paying some woman you just met a thousand dollars to fuck her? Because it's <laughs> some sucker shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, it's just some sucker shit. Yeah. So that, that's my take on it, man. You gotta stay that's sucker tough. free. That that originated from California, right? Sucker free. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure about that one. All I know is I hear that. That that seemed like more like a little generation ahead of me. Cause was I was it? no, cause I was. That sound like some '80s shit, but that sound like some '80s shit if you was a teenager in the '80s. You know what I'm saying? Go this ahead, is, Rock. Next question. So next question is from Tech D. Uh, he says, if you find and marry a traditional female girl from out of the country to wife. How do you keep her from westernizing once you bring her to the States? Keep her the fuck out of the States. I was just thinking that. <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> There's no like reason you, to. Man, you, social media is such a monster. Mm-hmm. And you literally can't keep her boxed in a... What, you going to cage her over here? Yeah. Oh, no, nah, you fucked up. You can't. Yeah. About the, and, from, and it's funny that this Andrew Tate shit has now become a verb. They're going to take your ass, man. They find out, man, you're keeping you. a woman in a box in there, man. Yeah. So I like you know, that. They're going to take it, your it, ass. It's, it's, if, you, if, you don't want, if you don't want your son to become... A, a gangbanger or a drug dealer, you keep him out of the fucking hood. Out the hood. Like, that's the only way to do it. Mm-hmm. Give your take on that. Don't get married. Fit that's away. the, I, we ain't gotta finish the shit. The married part is the wrong part. That's what I was thinking. Oh, he yeah. said bring girls he from said, outside the he country said if you find to marry. And marry a traditional female. Uh, that, that, outside now the we country. turn around. Yeah. You lost the driver's test. Mm-hmm. Okay. You All gotta right. take another one. But that's the big thing. This comes up in the sphere a lot. This has got to be top five questions that guys ask. Marriage want... give women too much power, bro. It but gets... no, but the, the idea that guys are getting is they're thinking, can I bring a girl from outside the states here to marry because there'll be more no, marriage? No, the, the the laws, the divorce laws of the United States will they, govern your They'll adapt to it. It just governs it. Like yeah. somebody's gonna put in her head. Uh, Eddie Murphy did a, a, a skit long time ago, I was man, just thinking on that. his live show. Man, like, fufu yeah, or un, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfufu said, "Eddie, <laughs> I'm hey, not Eddie. happy here, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> I want half." Because <laughs> yeah. 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 she was hanging with the yeah. American bras, mm-hmm. and so when Eddie Murphy did this way back then, man, like it's the it truth. The heads. And, and you got to be in a, for for marriage to work for a man. We're men which identifies with patriarchy. Mm-hmm. We got to be in a patriarchal society for any concept of that shit to work, especially legally. Even yeah. here, 
They'll slide some cum and law shit on you, man. You were the one for 10 years, man. Y'all living together, paying bills together, man. You realize she filed for divorce. You calling your attorney. How did this shit happen? Well, how long y'all been together? How long y'all been living together? What's Do you have another name? primary residence? Tech D. No. So, so Tech D, to summarize, that is actually the best answer I've heard. Because this comes up all the time. So to summarize, mm -hmm. you bring a girl from another country who seems more traditional here but you're you're getting her adapted to this culture mm -hmm, and yeah. these laws. Let me just put a period to it. It's it's the same thing. If you put somewhere, if you put me, we gonna get on the international because I don't like that you asked me that. Sorry, if you, I'm just fucking with you. See, I'm fucking with you. You don't you, and you don't quite know if I'm for real or not. See, that's the funny part. I taught right. you. I taught you that earlier. Maintain your frame. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> if you put any animal around other animals, they're gonna adapt to what the other mm -hmm. animals are doing. Yeah. But. Any foreign woman that comes to the States to get married or eventually getting married, aren't they just doing that for citizenship? I was going to say that. They'll like uh, keep in mind, times. they can yeah, play you. Times. They yeah. just want to yeah. get so out of off their country. Off rip, they're already using you. The families yeah. pay for that a lot of times. You don't know how many girls. Are you guys have probably come across this too. Or I almost the, got married twice. Well, yeah, yeah. The amount of girls <laughs> yeah. that I've come across that a, 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 a family friend has been like, we got to get cousin so and so in the States. Would you marry him? We'll pay you 10 grand. Right. Or so. Right. And Dang. that's a whole nother slippery slope. Dang. But, yeah. uh, Rock, what's the next holders question? Next question is from Asher. Shout out Asher Thunder God. He says, how can a guy that is very good at cold approaching when his friends are around transfer the same energy and mindset of cold approaching when he's by himself? Stop trying to impress your fucking friends. 100%. You got everything you do, man. You got to do it for yourself, man, because every year, who knows how your friends change. Like I was just saying earlier, your brothers are your brothers. Your friends, the same friends you have in high school aren't going to be your fucking friends if you go to college. Yep. You, get, you get totally new friends. So you got to do everything for yourself, man, and stop. If you are around a group of guys, you feel like you have to impress them or you get your motivation from them, which I get. Sometimes your crew More motivates you. Yeah. yeah, You're comfortable with your guys and you, you got to figure out how to turn that into your own energy because basically that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, just, just stop. Just stop giving a fuck, man. You know, people are not gonna like everything you do, no way. So just do what you like. Fuck what people say, and they like it or they don't. It don't matter. At the end of the day, people gonna talk shit about you. Period. Whether you kiss, I can do everything for a bitch, or I can do everything for a person. You know, and and it, it don't matter. Shit, I don't talk to my own mama now because of some shit, and I fucking took care of her ass at one point in time, and. She don't have it the way she want it, and this is somebody I ain't have. You know what I mean? So yeah. people got to understand too about people are people. Fuck the titles. Mm -hmm. People are people, bro. If you are a fucking scammer, if you're my auntie, that you, that you're a scammer first. You know what I mean? Or whatever. If you were drug so people people will put people a uh, girlfriend, mother. It's, people are fucking weird sometimes. You can't help where you came from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, why is your energy, why is your confidence attached to your friends? Mm -hmm. Like, to, I, I, that's for me, especially when it comes to dealing with dealing with women. That's kind of a weird dynamic to mm -hmm. me. Like, I've always, you know, I've always been, you know, in my space, man. When I'm with a woman, one on one, you know what I'm saying? Because that's my environment. Like, you can't control what your homies do if they're behind you, man. Yeah. They they go to hollering out dumb shit or, or just whatever they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself why. Why all of your confidence goes away with your friends? Well, like, the the direct answer to that is outside yeah. validation. Uh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Basically, for sure. that they're confirming to you that you're likable, right? That mm -hmm. that you're worth being around. That that you have some sort of status. Especially when you're young, it's like I, I crack that stupid ass joke, and if and, and if you know my boys and the fuck fucks, they all laugh. It's it's like mm -hmm. okay, I'm I'm that dude, right? Yeah, right, right. What's the next question, bro? Mm -hmm. So this is our last one. So the same one comes from from Asher, and um, I think this is a qu good question for Afi is um. So what have you learned from international travel about international women? Like, like what did going international teach you about women outside the country? Yeah, really elaborate on that. First off, I don't travel for hoes. So sure. let's get that one straight. You know, that's the first thing. Traveling changed your life. Um, I remember the first time I got on the plane. I, I used to be scared of planes. And I remember I met this bitch on MySpace. And we were going back and forth for like three or four months. And she was telling me to come down there, and I was really scared, but I didn't want to tell her I was scared to fly, and I don't know, I was younger, I don't want to drive, whatever. And she flew me out. <clears throat> so that taught me two things. So she flew me out, got on the, got on the uh, plane, and then the, the, the person that was next to me could tell I was nervous, so then they bought me hella drinks and shit. So when she picked me up, I was sizzle, whatever, and it was a good experience. Fucked her down, paid so well. It taught me that trust your instincts, you know what I'm saying, because, it turned out as a better trip than I than I than I thought it was going to be, 
And then for two, it taught me that if women want the dick or they want you, they'll pay for it. And they'll put extra emphasis on it when they really want it. As far as uh, traveling, uh, the most, the best benefit that I get from it is just seeing the type of foods that I like. So that's an analogy because people live in one place. They only have different versions of burgers yeah. and, the, and everything. They, people don't understand that traveling. They think it's like you, you, you go somewhere farther than where you are. Like when you go to fucking anywhere, when, it, when I'm in Rome, they live a whole different lifestyle. Different what world. happens here? It's a different world. People just think it's a different place, but mm-hmm. farther. Like, you know, I remember like when I was in Thailand, it was super cool. I went there and I used to seeing black people and they mobbed me. And I remember somebody asked me to take a picture. I thought they wanted me to take a picture of them and they just start mobbing me and shit. And it's just like, damn, this is what a celebrity feels like. But it, it just, but just, they don't see me. So it's just like, you don't get those type of experience. And then the best thing about traveling is, is it puts you in position to make shit happen. You have to make shit happen. It's just like if I if I just get you and throw you somewhere, then you got to figure it out. You got to meet people. You got to network. You got to do these things, you know. So that's that's the benefit. And as far as the women, the women are broad. See, people be people be fixated on how bad the bitches are, and they are. That I will clarify that. But <laughs> and they are. Yeah, they are. But these hoes are trained to listen to their man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? These bitches over here think submissive is being quiet and cooking. Submissive is an energy. If you if you if you just cook for me and serve my shit with a goddamn attitude, is that really being submissive? I could tell you don't want to do it. It don't please you. The submissiveness comes from a woman wanting to please you. You know, think about Al Bundy and whatever his girl was. They always, you know what I mean? Yeah. They they were tit for tat and shit. Like she didn't give, you know. So when you travel, you just see and then and then and then it gives you a, a appreciation of what you have when you see people being happy with nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I and I know. Just like you see is a lesson here from the teacher shit because BOA taught you that earlier. It's 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 about picking up the gems to apply them later. And that's why these niggas can't fuck with hoes or even get on the right shit because they only look forward to the shit that they need at the time. Mm-hmm. A guy hits me up, I want to get my ex back. No, fuck that shit. I'm going to just teach you about these bitches. You won't have to worry about that shit mm-hmm. again. But no, that, that's cool. But... Which should I text her? Right. Well, let's wrap it up with this because you touched on something that made me think cold approaching. Why do you and AMS get crucified over the concept of choosing signals? What is the beef people have with this? Because most young guys don't understand what it looks like for a woman. Like a woman isn't going to cold approach you. So her her attraction confirmation or choosing signal doesn't come in the way that your cold approach comes. But that's because you don't understand women. Understanding when a woman likes you without her verbally relaying it to you, that's when you start to dominate and master your interaction with mm-hmm. women. The guys like to say, well, go in, have this, get on stage, read the room. If you want to talk to a woman, read the woman. If there are five women over there, read the one. I bet Afi knew which one of those women he was going to get the what's call mm-hmm. it from. Yeah. Because, and I, I read it. I looked at it. <laughs> and I said, okay, let's see what all of their interactions were. There were a couple of them that just weren't. They were t- just talking to one another. It. They didn't even acknowledge. Okay, bam, they're gone. So now you're not talking to five women anymore. You're talking to three. Okay, hey, Afi hey, kept hey, talking. Yeah, let, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. Bam, that's the one. And, he already knew it. And, and the fact that you can watch that, understand, you understand choosing, and that's the benefit of it. Because somebody else who don't understand it, they don't understand what that, what's happening yeah. here. Yeah, oh, he's going to talk to five women. Yeah. No, he's hey. trying to see which one I'm of those scanning. women. I'm scanning. I'm like, yeah. zip, yeah. zip, zip, zip. And then guess what? I picked the bitch who's in the author shit. Yeah. So that, that, that I'm, we were already connected. And so, and, and so, They're and, and citing so, something that happened and, when we went out for and, pizza. And, and so what happens? What you think is a cold approach <laughs> turns into a warm approach, turns into a hot approach, he comes back with the connection. You Go. guys analyzed all that within one phrase of him saying, oh, y'all come sit with us. And yeah. based on that one <laughs> sentence, you were able to prioritize out of the pack of like, okay, that's the one that I have yeah, the best yeah. chance with. Because it's process of elimination. Yeah, like absolutely. You can't just look at the five and say, any, 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 mo. Mm-hmm. You talk, bam, two of them, two or three of them, one or two of them going to eliminate themselves immediately. Mm-hmm. And then nine times out of ten, you don't want those two anyway. Yep. The two with the, the girls with the least amount of confidence automatically eliminate themselves. Yeah, eliminate themselves. I just they're not used to guys approaching them anyway. They know that. It's like they know you ain't there for yeah, them. Yeah, they know you ain't there yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's a hell of a process to watch. And with me, I'm going to be honest with you, I talk from a perspective of a man who's always had status in my environment. Now, have I had as much reach as I have now? No, I can show up in a Timbuktu turkey somewhere and like, B.O.A., <laughs> <laughs> hey man come here yeah. so but i've always had status in my environment so i was always able to look at it from perspective okay somebody's gonna show me attraction confirmation yeah. somewhere yeah so. i think it's more of a nuanced conversation yeah than 
you either cold approach or you wait for choosing signals right. or you either cold approach or you're out or you're automatically. But let me address something, Savo. We don't wait. Mm -hmm. I'm a busy motherfucker. I'm not going anywhere saying I'm going here just to get women. Yeah. No, I don't so wait for the choosing signals. That's signal. what they yeah, misconstrue. Yeah. What are you going to do? Wait for choosing signal? No, no. I'm so on and I'm so fly and women love my energy so much that I don't have to go anywhere to get women. Mm -hmm. I just get women in random places mm -hmm. like yeah. at Walmart. The girl that's in there with the pretty ass toes that's in there trying to find a new pair of sandals because when she got her toes done, her sandal flap broke. And now she's in there and we're in the same section and she's doing things. I mean, I've had women do silly shit. Little girl yeah. shit. If your energy's strong, it'll make a grown woman do little girl shit. Yeah, She'll pull up beside and say, mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yeah, I, I, you know what? Yeah, that shit was. When I looked in the mirror, I kind of felt that same way. Yeah, the conversation yeah. about cold approaching, they're, yeah. they're making to be too black and white. Because exactly. if you're out in public and you are on the opposite end of a bar from a girl that looks so good to you that you're like, I have to go talk to her and see what's up. You, should, you shouldn't be a bitch. You should go talk to her. But that's a little bit different than the conversation of you should start out your Friday evening saying to yourself, I'm going out on a mission this, to cold approach that's as why, many That's why those possible. dudes could, feel that pressure. They put it on themselves. I could put a period yeah. on this. You're yeah. teaching fucking guys to be thirsty who never had water. Uh, I'm going to say that church. again. Give me a super chat now. Church. You, church. You're teaching dudes to be thirsty to never have water, bro. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you, it's, I, I kind of view it like this. You're teaching alpha principles to a man who identifies himself as a beta male. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't understand that to him it's impossible to get a woman that you just don't go cold approach. So I say build a confidence in yourself and then you start to you walk in when I walk into somewhere man I'm like oh shit BOA in this bitch. I ain't gonna say it out loud, but I walk in a place like that. Yeah. And so I'm making eye contact with all women there. You make eye contact with all women when you walk into a place and then you see a woman who gives you that double look and you're like, bam, Dang, there it it's is. not a cold yep. approach. Yep. You 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 make the approach warm by observing your fucking environment. And like Savo said, how many times do you see a woman that's at the other end of the bar engaged in a conversation with other people? And then you just go over and interrupt the conversation yeah. and say, hey, I saw you from across the room. Yeah. I kind of, that shit is weird. Yeah, shit. I've always been uncomfortable with that. But yeah. then I've always second guessed it and thought like, is that me being a bitch? But like I said, I talk to women everywhere I go, but I, it's usually women that are already in the vicinity. Yeah. Like I'm already in a joint where there's women around me and I can turn to the one next to me. Right. Or I, I see if there I see if there's an end. There's just mm -hmm. something that's never rubbed me the right way, like you said, about invading somebody's space and like trying to interrupt a conversation. Or you made an analogy mm -hmm. that was hysterical at the house where you're saying, like, we, we say cold approach. So they think we're talking about going and interrupting a college bitch who's sitting no. there by herself doing her homework or something. Right, like right, that. right. Yeah. So yeah. you know, I think yeah. the thing about about I, just the fact that I said cold approach is beta, mm -hmm. guys just took it to mean well, whatever they think cold approach means. I'm fucking dissing it. Mm -hmm. Not once. And and I, I just never felt the need to address it a, as a solo piece of content. I'll talk about it within a piece of content. Here's what I mean when I say code approach. I mean, I'm somewhere. There's a woman over there. Hasn't even given me a look at all. But I'm going to walk across this club and go over there in a loud club or in a bar. And I'm going to go over there. Hey, excuse me. I was looking at you because I'm telling you guys, you don't understand that. Like Sabo said earlier, sex brings a lot of trouble Thanks. that is not really worth unless you're looking for like a relationship or a wife. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what you're getting over there. Mm -hmm. So at the least you can do if you put yourself in a certain position, man, not not just necessarily status, but self-confidence. You're going to get enough interest from women if you know what interest looks like. Yeah. <laughs>